If everybody, if everybody would please have a seat. I will now call to order the meeting of the Omaha Planning Board. The planning board members that are here today are Trenton Maggot, David Rosacker, Michael Pate, Jeff Moore, Patrick Morris, Christine Carnes, Vice Chair, and I am Greg Rosenbaum, Chairman. Members of the city staff that are in attendance today are Dave Fanslaw, Planning Director, Eric England, Acting Assistant Planning Director, Mike Carter, Acting Current Planning Manager, Robert LaRocco, Planning Board Administrator, Jennifer Taylor from the City Law Department, and Lisa Agins, our Recording Secretary. Uh, before we go any further, uh, we're going to have uh, just uh, take a few minutes. Trenton Magid, this is his last meeting. He's been on the board for five years, and I'll turn this over to Eric. Yeah, just on behalf of uh, City Planning Department as well as the other uh, city staff that work with this board, we just want to thank you, Trenton, for, for your insight, especially dealing with matters on commercial real estate, um, as well as always a, um, a witty personality, I should say. But, but we just want to say thank you, and um, I'll let any other board members say anything, but we do have a certificate of appreciation to, to give to you afterwards. I'll start off uh, as chairman. I'd, uh, Trenton, for your five years on here, I noticed when you came on to the board, the knowledge of what's going on in Omaha, you got your radio show that talks about everything that's going on, but their knowledge, uh, well, I, <laughs> the, the knowledge that you have, I can remember one uh, board member that's had that much knowledge, that was R.J. Neer, and so you're in good company with knowing what goes on, and I've always appreciated that knowledge, and I've appreciated your sense of, of humor that you always bring to the pre-meetings. Thank you. Thank you. you, working with you, learned a lot from you. There's nobody on this board that knows more about commercial real estate than you, and that's uh, that's always been Especially a Especially this guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a close second. How about that? Um, and, uh, yeah, your sense of humor has always, always kept things lighthearted, and I wish you uh, the best in your next endeavor, and thank you for your service to the city. Thank you. Um, basically, added to the same comments of uh, the you know, it's been fun to work with you alongside you. Uh, again, your insight into the industry and uh, the knowledge that you have and, of course, your, your sense of humor. And I hope to continue that relationship. It's be pretty boring without me. <laughs> <laughs> Never a dull moment. That's what I'll say. And uh, I, I truly appreciate those times and uh, look forward to seeing you <laughs> outside of this and uh, continuing our friendship. Thank, Thank you so much. I don't have anything to say. No. <laughs> <laughs> Trent and I have known each other for a number of years, uh, well before we've served together on this board. And uh, one thing I've, I've come to know about Trenton is that he's got the city of Omaha always at his best interest at, at heart and uh, done a great job in, in helping um, grow the city of Omaha over the years. And your insights, uh, Trenton, have been tremendous. And thanks for your impact to the city of Omaha and everything you've done Thank you. for the community. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Trenton. It's been a pleasure to sit next to you for a year and a half. I'm not sure who's going to talk in my ear while people are presenting up there, but um, you're a great broker, a great planning board member, and a good friend too, so thank you. You all are very kind, and uh, I'll uh, rip up my speech now that you've been so kind. Um, I do appreciate it. I want to thank a number of people, uh, Mayor Stothard for putting the trust in me and uh, uh, nominating me for this board, the City Council for approving it. Little did they know what they're getting into. Uh, it's been a fast five years. I, I wish I could have done more. Um, I want to thank Dave Fanslaw, uh, Eric England, the whole staff, uh, Michael Carter. You've all been really great, and um, yeah, I love working with you guys. I'm not leaving the town. I've been in commercial real estate for 25 years. I'll be on the radio for probably another 25 years. So I'm sorry for that. Um, but now I'll be uh, unbridled on what I can say. Uh, there's been a few times where they've had to harness me a little bit, and uh, we made it through it. And uh, FCC's kept me on the radio, and um, I don't know who's kept me on this board, but uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody else, and we've got a great city that um, there's a lot more growth to be, to be done here, and uh, we appreciate everybody's assistance. And uh, the planning department does a wonderful job, and. Uh, I hope they'll still take my calls uh, after I'm off the board. Thank you, guys.
Trenton, would you come on up, please? So, and, that, um, you know, you guys, without me here, I hope you get picked up for another uh, year on uh, public access TV. <laughs> So I'm going to say the last, I guess, word before Trenton starts his last meeting. Uh, Trenton, for, on behalf of myself and the administration and, and staff, uh, we appreciate, in all seriousness, we appreciate your service um, to the city of Omaha. Um, you were always willing to listen um, to every case that came before you, and we appreciate that. We appreciate your professionalism, your knowledge of the industry. Um, can be tough to replace on the board that that knowledge sometimes you talk in languages that I'm not sure any of us understood um, except for maybe Patrick when Patrick came on board um, but all seriousness um, we appreciate your service it's not um, you know the easiest board to serve on it's a very important board uh, we take it very seriously because it's our it's our passion it's our livelihood uh, and again we just appreciate your professionalism for the last five years and appreciate your friendship as well thank you I think what he's saying is begging me not to take every case off the consent agenda <laughs> so uh, to make it last thanks everybody okay we'll proceed with the meeting our rules of procedure are as follows notice of this hearing has been published copies of today's agenda are located on the table in front of us down here you're welcome to come down and pick one up. The cases on the consent agenda will be heard first. Consent cases are perceived by the planning board to be non-controversial, have already been heard, or been recommended for layover, and therefore will be read and voted on without the opportunity for your testimony. If you wish to testify, you may remove the case from the consent agenda. When each consent case is read, I will ask if anyone wants the case removed. If you do, please stand up and say so, and the case will be removed. This case will then be heard in the order in which it appears on the regular agenda after we go through the consent cases. When the case is heard, you will have the opportunity to come to the podium, clearly state your name and address, and give your testimony at that time. When hearing cases on the regular agenda, the board will first hear from the applicant. After the applicant states their case, we will hear from the proponents, and then we will hear from the opponents. After both sides are heard, the public hearing will be closed, and no additional testimony will be permitted unless a board member requests additional information. When at the podium, please clearly state your name, address, and whom you are representing for the record. Your testimony is very important to us in the interest of time and courtesy to others. Please be short and to the point. We will try to limit each case to 10 minutes. Those directly involved in the, in the case, please speak first. We request that large groups select a spokesperson to represent that group, therefore eliminating repetitive testimony. When giving testimony, please provide new information and try not to repeat what is previously said. We do ask that all speakers and others be treated with courtesy and with respect. In that regard, please remain silent while seated and please turn off your cell phones. Our decision to approve, deny, or continue a case made here today will be forwarded to the City Council for another public hearing and final disposition by the City Council. Conditional use permits are an exception to this rule. The Board's decision made here today on conditional use permits are final and not forwarded to the City Council. Lastly, upon the advice of the Law Department, all communications to the Board members from attorneys or other interested parties should be transmitted through the planning department so that they are made a part of the public record. The department will then transmit all that information to the board as well as to the rest of the public. Rezoning matters are an exception to this rule. A current copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act can be found in a white binder on the east wall of this room. 
the only change I believe is we added uh, to the consent agenda is we added uh, agenda item number eight as a layover on this and but I think it's in all the new ones that are up so with that being said I'll get started with the consent cases Agenda item number five, case C10-19-170, C12-19-171. Applicant, Metropolitan Community College area. It is on for approval. Request, preliminary and final plat approval of MCC CIO edition, a minor plat inside city limits with rezoning from GO and HI to GO and HI. Location, southeast of Edward Babe Gomez Avenue and 33rd Street. Does anyone wish to have this removed from the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none, agenda item number six. Okay, C10-19-172, C12-19-173. Applicant, Kiewit Infrastructure Company. It is on for approval. Request, preliminary and final plat approval of Builders District 2, a minor plat inside city limits with rezoning from DS to CBD, Property is located within an ACI overlay district location west of 16th and Burt Street. Does anyone wish to have this removed from consent? I thought there might be. That will be removed. Agenda item number seven, case C12-19-175. Applicant, Sage Capital Real Estate Investments. It is on for approval, the request, preliminary and final plat approval of the mill, a minor plat inside city limits, location 6152 Military Ave. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number eight, case C10-19-176, C12-19-177, applicant, Lanahaw Pacific Inc. care of David Lanahaw. It is on for layover. Request preliminary plat approval of Blue Sage Creek 2, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG and R4 to R4. Location northeast of 213th and F Street. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Agenda item number 10. Case C12-19-179, applicant Dan Stoller, Stoller. It is on for layover. The request, preliminary and final plat approval of Elkhorn Ridge Estates, replat 2, a minor plat inside city limits, location 20033 Elkhorn Ridge Drive. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 11, case C10-19-189, applicant Joel Nybaum. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from R435 and R535 to R5. Location, 4830 Webster Street. Would anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 12, case C10-19-190, applicant Ron Hackett. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from HI to NBD. Property is located within an ACI-1 overlay. Location, 1219 Pacific Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Agenda item number 13, case C10-19-191. Applicant Chris Snare. It is on for approval. Request approval of the MCC Major Commercial Corridor Overlay District. Location, 11900 Pacific Street. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 14, case C10-19-192. Applicant, Rebecca Turner. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from R7 to LO. Location, 8040 and 8050 Chicago Street. Does anyone wish to have this removed from consent? Seeing none, agenda item number 15, case C10-19-195, 
applicant planning department on behalf of the city of Omaha. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from GC to R5, location 2517 Ames Avenue. Does there anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 16, case C10-19-196, applicant planning department on behalf of the city of Omaha. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from GC to R7, location 2006 Ohio Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 17, case C10-19-197, Applicant Planning Department on behalf of the City of Omaha. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from GI to R4. Location 4807 North 24th Street. Does there anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, it's agenda item number 18, case C10-19-198. Applicant Planning Department on behalf of the City of Omaha. It is on for approval. Rezone a uh, request rezoning from GC to R7, location 3116 North 16th Street. Does anyone wish to have this case removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 19, case C10 19 201. Applicant Daniel Bolt. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from GC to NBD. Property is located within. The ACI Overlay District, location 140 South 40th Street. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, it's agenda item number 20, case C10-19-187. Applicant Hector Laguello, hope I said that right, uh, is on for approval. Request rezoning from GI to NBD. Property is located within an ACI Overlay District. Location 1915 South 13th Street. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, moving on, uh, agenda item number 21, case C10 19 180, C11 19 Applicant Access Bank. It is on for approval. Request approval of a PUR plan unit redevelopment along with approval of the MCC Overlay District. Property is located within a Flood Fringe Overlay District, location 6405 Center Street. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, uh, agenda item number 22, case C11-19-182, applicant Sage Capital Real Estate Investments. It is on for approval. Request approval of a PUR planned unit redevelopment to allow development of multifamily residential. Location 6152 Military Ave. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 23, case C11 17 265. Applicant Saddle Creek 1011 LLC. It is on for approval. Request approval of a major amendment to the PUR planned unit redevelopment to revise the approved signage. Location 1011 South Saddle Creek Road. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Um, agenda item number 25. Case C8-19-200. Applicant Dan Stoller. It is on for layover. Request approval of a major amendment to the special use permit assumed to allow outdoor sports and recreation in the DR district. Location 233 Elkhorn Ridge Drive. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Moving on, agenda item number 26, case C8-19-202. Applicant James, James Thibodeau. It is on for approval. Request approval of a major amendment to the large project special use permit assumed to allow college and university facilities in the GO district. Location 3003 Edward Babe Gomez Avenue. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, 
Agenda item number 27, case C7-19-194, C8-19-159. Applicant Robert Patterson. It is on for approval. Request approval of a special use permit to allow daycare services general in a R4 district. This was laid over from the August 7th meeting with approval of a parking adjustment for a mixed use development, section 55-736. Location 4768 Q Street. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Agenda item number 29, case C7-19-184. I apologize ahead of time. Applicant Julio Corvarubias. It is on for approval. Request approval of a conditional use permit to allow personal services in the Allo District location southwest of 13th and Polk Street. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Agenda item number 30, case C7-19-185, C10-19-199. Applicant, Daryl Icy. It is on for approval. Request approval of a conditional use permit to allow warehousing and distribution limited in the CC district with approval of the ACI overlay district. Location 11540 West Dodge Road. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 31, case C7-05-216, applicant Stonebridge Christian Church. It is on for layover request. Approval of a major amendment to the conditional use permit to allow religious assembly in the R4 district with a waiver of section 55-186 height to allow a 37 foot tall building. Location 15801 Butler Avenue. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Uh, agenda item number 32, case C7-19-156. Applicant, Fairway Stores, Inc., it is on for layover. Request approval of a conditional use permit to allow food sales general in the LC district, location northeast of 132nd and 4th Streets. Does anyone wish to have this removed? You do, sir? Okay. And finally, agenda item number 33, case C14-19-193. Applicant Planning Department on behalf of the City of Omaha is on for approval. Request vacation of a portion of Pacific Street east of 6th Street to the dead end abutting Lot 1, City of Omaha, Replat 2 edition, and Lots 2 through 3, Block 245, Original City of Omaha edition. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, that is it for the consent Agenda, I will take a motion. I will. Yeah. Uh, do we have a motion for those items on consent for, a pro for approval? I move for approval of agenda items 5, 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 26, 27, 29, 30, and 33. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Carnes? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Pate? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Maggot? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Okay, do we have a, a motion for those consent items on for layover? Case numbers eight. 10, 25, and 31. Second. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Rosacker? Yes. Pate? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Maggot? Yes. Carnes? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Those cases that were on the consent agenda that we just voted on, there will be no further action taken on those cases today. They are done. Uh, you are free to stay or free to leave. It's up to you. But those cases have been decided for the day, and no public testimony will happen on any of those cases.
I'll wait just a few seconds here for the crowd to clear. We're going to get started with case number one. Case number one is administrative meeting only, meaning there will be no opportunity for public testimony. It is agenda item number one, case C10-18-275, C12-18-276, applicant Lauren Johnson, Celebrity Homes, Omaha, request final plot approval of Lakeview 168, lots 1 through 36, out lots A through E. A subdivision outside the city limits with rezoning from AG to R4 location northwest of 168th Street and Kansas Avenue. Eric? Yeah, so this is first phase final plat for 136 single family residential lots within 45 acres. Uh, the entire development of Lakeview 168 consists of two phases, a total of 265 total lots, but only the 136 is being final platted with this request. Um, the project is consistent and compliant with the approved preliminary plat, which, are, which was approved by City Council on January 29th of this year. Um, the resubmittal has provided two trail connections from the development to the adjacent Lake Flanagan Trail network system. Uh, one item that will need to be cleaned up before it can proceed to City Council is um, for the SID boundary to be amended to include the right-of-way of HWS Cleveland. Uh, but that being said, staff recommends approval of the rezoning from AG to R4, approval of the final plat subject to the two conditions in the recommendation report prior to City Council. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the board? I move to approval of the rezoning from AG to R4, approval of the final plat subject to the meeting the following conditions prior to following the request to City Council. The, one, the revised SID boundary to show the entire HWS Cleveland Boulevard right of way is included in the SID and two, the submittal of an acceptable final subdivision agreement. Second. We have a motion and a second, Lisa. Will you please record the vote? Haight? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Magid? Yes. Carnes? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Okay. Moving on, agenda item number two, case C3 19 166. Applicant Planning Department on behalf of the City of Omaha request approval of the disposal of city-owned property to an interested party under the Community Development Law. <coughs> Excuse me. Location 1814 Sprague Street, 2420 Binney Street, 2428 Bristol Street, 2521 Spencer Street, 2582 uh, Pratt Street, 3809 North 29th Street, 4002 Parker Street. 4021 Parker Street, 4118 North 25th Street. Autumn, are you presenting for the city? Okay. Autumn Evans, city planning staff. We have nine properties selected to transfer to Habitat for Humanity for residential homes. Um, these are all zoned residential, and um, city staff recommends approval. Thank you. Any other proponents that wish to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Okay, come forward, give your name and address, sir. My name is John Cook, address 5304 North 78th Street, and that's Omaha. Um, I'm an interested party to 1814 Sprague Street. It's a very small lot. I think it's about 40 by 50. Uh, I own the adjacent property at 4101 North 19th Street. And actually, 1814 Sprague Street is the backyard of my property. My concern is what could be even built there on such a small piece of land at this point with the current codes. And I think uh, I've tried to contact the city several times on purchasing that property to make my lot complete, to bring the backyard back to where it was intended to be on its original plot. So I would request that that particular property be removed from this, from the uh, planning 
department had given it to uh, Habitat. Sir, is that your primary residence? No, it's not. Is it a rental property? Or? Yes. I have a prospective buyer for the property, but not having a backyard, you can virtually, from the house to the lot line is four feet. From the back door to the lot line of 1814 Sprague Street. Okay, so you have a prospective buyer for just your property or your property and the other property? Well, they say they'd like to have that other empty lot. What was the city's response when you reached out to the city about purchasing the They lot? told me it wasn't available at the time. And I think I called three or four times. When was the last time you spoke to him? Oh, I would say about a year ago. <coughs> so I, I really truly believe it's more beneficial to let it become the true backyard of 4101 North 19th. How would that work? Could the, could the uh, Habitat for Humanity, could they decide to sell it to somebody once, once it's given to them? Um, sometimes they do, and sometimes they reach out to, um, and I'm not, I don't work for Habitat for Humanity, so I can't um, speak for them exactly, um, but they do reach out to homeowners and purchase homes, and they rehab homes, right. so um, have you, has Habitat reached out to you at all to purchase your rental property, to rehab it? No. So it hasn't yeah, been no. in negotiations. No, no. Um, and so since I've been here, um, I hadn't heard from John. And so if I would have heard from John, I probably would have pulled this one off so we could reevaluate the situation. Um, so it's probably before I got here that you reached probably. out, probably. Yeah. So, um, so, so if we pulled this off, though, and he doesn't buy it, then it could sit there for a long time, right? It could, potentially. Or we could. Because um, we need to put up, we need to get it appraised? No. No. If we're going to deed to the land bank, no. Okay. But if um, we're going to sell we to him. To him, then we would. We could possibly do a side lot disposal, um, which we'd have to have it approved by city council to where we could sell it for less than appraised amount. Mm -hmm. What's that address? 1814 Sprague Street. We could do an auction right now. <laughs> right. Autumn, would there be any problems if we were to approve the package today but have further conversations with John regarding that specific property and amending it, the, the package before it proceeds to City Council? That would be fine. Would we proceed with um, the remaining properties but just not that one? I would recommend including the entire package for approval and we can continue those conversations and yeah. if that one needs to come out before City Council, yeah, if absolutely. that's possible. Mm -hmm. could do that. I like that. John, does that work for you? Yes, so we can continue okay. the conversation. And you and Autumn can exchange information here, so you have someone that you know. She'll give you her information. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks, John. Any other opponents that wish to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Any additional comments, questions from the board? Move for approval. Well, wait a second. We need to hear from you. Yeah, and I just yeah, want to put on the record we're making no commitment, John, to to dispose of that property to you, but we'll use our best, you know, sit down in our best faith and, and discuss it and see if it's a possibility. But staff recommends approval. Okay. Do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you record the vote, please? Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Magid? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Tate? Yes. Ms. Carnes? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Agenda item number three, KC3-19-167, Applicant Planning Department on behalf of the City of Omaha request approval of disposal of city-owned property to an interested party under community development law. Location, 3315 Franklin Street, 2117 Locust Street, 2201 Locust Street, 2424 Laramore Ave, 2564 Meredith Ave, 2115 Brown Street, 2115 Lake Street, 1915 Willis Ave, 1715 South 19th Street, 1819 Emmett Street, 3324 North 16th Street, 3204 North 16th Street, 5014 North 23rd Street, 3674 Ames Avenue, 3672 Ames Avenue. Autumn, are you presenting again? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Autumn Evans, 
City of Omaha planning staff. Um, we have 15 properties. They're all zoned residential in which the land bank um, have agreed to accept. Um, as we go through the City of Omaha's inventory, the land bank is a good partner of ours um, that helps us uh, transfer and sell properties. Um, some things they've done with lots that we've deeded are um, they've uh, sold them for residential construction, side lot programs, which are um, which would be a lot that is next to someone's that's not necessarily buildable, so they would extend their yard, um, or possibly community gardens or community outreach. And um, city staff recommends approval. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other proponents that wish to speak? Are there any opponents that wish to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Additional comments or questions from the board? Eric, do you want to add? Recommend approval. Do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Morris? Yes. Magid? Yes. Carnes? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Pate? Yes. Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Agenda item number four, case C10-19-168, C12-19-169, applicant parkway properties, request preliminary and final plat approval of Enterprise Industrial Park, a minor plat inside city limits along with rezoning from R4, R5, excuse me, R4, R5, R7, and HI to HI. Location, northwest of 13th and Locust Street. May the applicant please come forward. Good afternoon, Tom Ackley with the law firm McCauley Jessen, 1125 South 103rd Street, Omaha, Nebraska. We represent Parkway Properties, LLC, the applicant here. Also with me today is Mike McIntosh from Lamprey Nearson. He'll come up and explain the plat and some of the access a little further. And also with me is Ryan Keel from Investors Realty and Tom Egan from Parkway Properties, if there's any questions for those gentlemen. Quick background, uh, picture's worth a thousand words. Basically, Virgil Anderson, over the course of almost 40 years, has acquired approximately 63 different parcels of real estate up in the area north of 13th Street, and it would be immediately uh, east of 16th Street, south of the Ames Avenue area, and of course, obviously west of Carter Lake. But he's had this industrial area. This map that you're seeing on the site here shows the current boundaries. Uh, everything that's in red is what we're asking for, a replat, preliminary plat, and final plat uh, to create one lot as per the request of the planning department. And in terms of the current zoning, everything you're seeing there that's shaded in tan is currently heavy industrial. And in talking with the planning department about using that site going forward, they requested if we replant that into one lot that we would also ask for <coughs> rezoning to get everything consistent. Again, about 95% of the site is currently heavy industrial. Uh, the portions where there's just remnants of other platting is up here. It looks like an old railroad track line as part of the R4. We've also got some R5, which again is an old rail line. And then there's one lot on the southeast corner, uh, which is R7. So again, 95% of it is heavy industrial, so the rezoning piece is really a change only to about four remnant parcels. The rest of it is consistent with what we have. In terms of the applicant's goal is to bring this property back online into productive use. Uh, the plans for the applicant and basically is to stage this over the course of three to five years for cleanup, starting on the south and going north. In terms of the cleanup that will occur, and you maybe saw the article in today's World Herald kind of highlighted some of those things, uh, but initially doing some cleaning and grubbing, lots of trees, underbrush, growth on the site, uh, and literally tons and tons of concrete and mounds of concrete. There are piles of concrete out there, some of them that are 40 feet high. In terms of starting from the south, the goal in terms of productive use going forward, uh, this would be a dirt farm area where excavators and others could come in, bring wet soil when they're on a job site, let it dry out. They can gather it back up, go out back to the job site, and put it back down. Again, for something that's this close to downtown areas and industrial, uh, very important. It'll be a good, we think, well used uh, by other businesses. Next area, the grading and staging area. Currently, that's the heaviest accumulation of concrete. Uh, the initial goal there is to get the concrete that's there ground up, uh, use the ground concrete on site for roads and for uh, 
other, other purposes, and then also to grade so we get proper draining on the entire site. As you continue going north, uh, the goal would be a trailer storage area in this location, and next to that where there's some railroad tracks that could be re-engaged next to active tracks, uh, the goal is to have transportation loading area. So again, we'll have folks that want to store and transload between rail and, uh, and truck. And then finally, the upper portion of the site, by the way, from 16th Street going down to the bottom of the site, it's 20 to 30 feet. There's quite a drop down from 16th Street. Uh, so the portion that's accessible from 16th, uh, that current area has several hundred tons of concrete. It's an old abandoned grain facility. And again, the goal would be to clean up the old concrete that's there, get it ground up, and again, turn that into usable area. So again, timeline-wise, we have no current plans or users for the site. Uh, the developer is willing to speculate that this is something we can turn into a productive, active site again for the city of Omaha and uh, taking the risk of basically having marketing going forward while he's cleaning up and finding users for the site. But we think it'll take a minimum of about three years to go from south to north and to hopefully find users along the way that can activate the site. And with that, I guess I would ask Mike McIntosh to come forward if he'd like to speak a little bit towards uh, the access to the site. Sure. Good afternoon, Mike McIntosh, 14710 West Dodge Road, uh, Lamprey Anderson. Um, yeah, I think Tom covered a lot of the specifics. Uh, one thing he didn't cover was the access uh, to the site. Uh, so currently Locust Street, there's kind of a gated access right now. It was the old Hall Road that Virgil had used. Uh, that road does go all the way through the site. And so uh, we're proposing to use that southern access off of Locust Street and um, work that Hall Road to be able to use that Hall Road to access the different uses throughout the site. Um, the upper site, which Tom mentioned, is uh, 20 to 30 feet higher up where the old uh, um, concrete silos were. Uh, we do have an access off of 16th Street. There's an existing gated access right there. And then there's another access off of, um, I believe that's Pratt Street, uh, that gets into that higher site. Um, as Tom mentioned, there's um, some R7 uh, zoning here. Uh, there is, it's 35 to 40 feet uh, of difference in between. Uh, there's about a two to one slope that's currently heavily vegetated. A um, lot of um, illegal dumping going on in that area right now. So the idea is to get some of that cleaned up. Um, so I think um, I'm here to answer any other technical questions that you may have on the plat or on the uh, engineering side, uh, but I think that probably covers. Um, so right now, in a really concrete way, for example, do most of the neighbors, w when complete, will the uh, finished elevation be how much higher than the neighborhood or will it be even with the neighborhood? No, so we're not planning to change the elevation of the actual site, and that's about 35 to 40 feet below the neighborhood. So it sits well below. There's a two-to-one slope that's heavily vegetated that so separates the, the two. So they look over it? They look over the top, yeah. Okay. And when it's done with those piles ground up, it'll still be that way? It'll still be that way, correct. And there's no plans to, to build structures? It's, it's more of just a land. At this time, it's a heavy industrial. It's, um, you know, a contractor brings in wet dirt and farms the dirt, dries it out, takes it off, do trailer storage, do other storage, but that's the plan. Okay. And the site's not being used for anything right now. You, you mentioned there's illegal dumping going on. Are they access to going through that gate or? No, I think there might be some, some empty back lots that they can get into. Uh, they're probably back in a pickup truck. Uh, I think in the paper they even talked about some couches that are down on that slope, some old furniture. It's just a, it's easy way to do it because of uh, all the trees and it's so dense. Um, it's just uh, an it easy, and it slopes down so quickly, right? How are you going to uh, prevent that in the future then? Are you going to fence it or are you going to? Correct, yes. The plan is to do security fencing, monitor it, um, clean out some of those trees to make it, you know, so it's not as, um, you know, is more visible, I guess. Will, will that be something that operates continually, or, or will there be set hours on, on, you know, the operations once that's established? My understanding is the hours are regular business hours. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so the 8 to 5, 8 to 7, whatever the, the regulations are, it would be standard business okay. hours, correct? Thank you. Any other proponents that wish to speak? Come forward, ma'am. And are you uh, a proponent? I own some land at 14 Kevin Street. 
come on forward, give your name and address, please. And I live at 1472 Pinckney, almost 50 years there. Um, and my name is Eileen Bogart. I'm concerned about what kind of industrial are they putting there. Um, I'm also concerned about there's a lot of people in that area that has a lot of respiratory problems. How much dust and dirt is going to be coming up over that hill? There's been times where Anderson um, was putting stuff there. You wash your car today, it was dirty today. You open up your window in your house, dust was all inside your house. I just want to know what are they planning on doing exactly. They're not really saying um, what are they putting there yeah. and how long it's going to take and uh, how long are we going to be subjected to this dust and dirt. I thought they just talked about that, their plan and, and what they intend to do with that. But we'll bring them up again. If you missed it, I'll bring them I'm, up again. I missed some of it. And we'll bring yeah. Tom up again and he can well, lay it out for you. Okay. So okay. it's no big Just a second, difference. Tom. We'll... Okay. Okay. I'm taking you were you are an opponent then. Um, I'm just a person that lives there and okay. about <laughs> All right. I'll ask are there any other proponents that wish to speak? She's an opponent. A proponent? Okay. You're in favor of this? Okay. <laughs> Name and address, please. Hello, my name is Sandra Pedersen, 1466 Lothrop Street. I had my property for like 26 years. I got it when I was 25, and I, I remodeled it, restored it, basically. Um, I'm glad they're not going to raise it because the view is spectacular. Um, I do have one question because we have like an abundance of wildlife. I mean, just because of the area. I mean, it's tons, so it's coming from that area. What will be done to like help with that? Because some of those um, wild birds and animals, um, they're gonna have to go somewhere. So <laughs> that's just something to think about. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. S Sandra, you live at 14th and Locust, you said? 1466 Slow 1466. So it's, what's it like? I mean, what's that property like right now living next to there? I mean, it's not activated, there's nothing going on. It sounds well, like there's some illegal dumping going on. What's your take as a neighbor? Well, um, the neighbors like towards the north side, just beautiful. A lot of them have really done well. When you go towards the south side in between um, 14th and Locust, right there, that area is really kind of a little bit run well, down I, I and that's where some people dump. Yeah, this specific property there, that's where they dump at? Well, you see it. The city comes by and cling up pretty good close to Locust, mm -hmm. but I know when you come from Carter Lake, you can see the areas where they dumped, you can see where basically it's various different people probably that lived in those properties over the years where basically they'd probably dump stuff over the cliff. Okay. And so basically that's um, most of where the cleanup will have to take place. But the view is just beautiful, beautiful. So I'm glad they're not going to build higher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Any other proponents that wish to speak? Okay, seeing none, are there any opponents that wish to speak? Go ahead, come forward, give your name and address, please. Robert McGuire, 2884 Martin Avenue. Um, can we shine the light back on this? I own the property here uh, on Commercial Avenue, 4401 through 4409, about two acres approximately. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of illegal dumping going on there. I spend about $300 a month cleaning this area. Every month, it seems like. Uh, I finally cut down a bunch of trees and laid them across there, and that stopped people from coming in there and dumping. Um, right down at the bottom of the hill here, there is a trash company. He parks a bunch of his dumpsters down there, and it really just it makes it a trashy neighborhood. Just a few blocks up and a few blocks to the east, there is a crime family. What they do is they go through 
and they in houses and they they rob all the copper out of them and they recycle the copper and then they burn the houses i know they've done it to two of mine so i'm very against them parking a bunch of rusty old trailers down at the bottom of this hill because it's just going to make it worse and it's going to reduce the value of my property and every other property in this neighborhood um, which they're already having a hard time keeping their value up you know we're fighting against crime we're fighting against poverty and uh, a system that has really just neglected this entire northeast area of Omaha and I want to build there but if they're going to park just a bunch of rusty old dumpsters and which is already there we're getting rid of those but if they're going to park more trucks down there and that's all it's going to be is a parking lot for old trucks they can expect more crime um, and I don't want to see that in my neighborhood. I want to improve my neighborhood. Thank you. Sure. If the way it is now, is, is the property very secure? Mine? No, there. There's. Okay, they have. They have a fence, but there's holes in the fence that they can get through. So if 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 this gentleman's going to take it and and level it, and I understand your concern about old trucks and things like that, but if they provide security and and new fencing and you know guard it a little bit better isn't that better than what it is now as far as better than what it is now yeah but it doesn't help the neighborhood and this neighborhood really needs a lot of help a yeah, lot given of what, what's that under this work. given what's there now and it's not obviously it's, it's a lot of uh, concrete and unbuildable area sure um do you think of another use for it other than absolutely <laughs> see this right here this is Carter Lake that's a big beautiful lake we could put apartments and condos right there on that hillside overlooking that lake and it would be one of the most beautiful areas in Omaha if we would stop neglecting it but what about the area itself the, the that area it's right I don't the only thing between that on property and the lake is a road and some electrical wires now, you, you could make apartment complex right there. I mean, they're putting them all over Midtown and West Omaha. They're not putting any in Northeast Omaha. But this could be one of the nicest areas in the entire metro area if somebody would really do it right. I want to talk to the engineer about the, the soil conditions. About My concern is that sure, the, the landfill, is, yeah. whether you can build on and encapsulate what's there, I don't know if, if that's feasible anymore, unfortunately. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Robert. Done? Yeah. Okay. Any other opponents that wish to speak? Stephen Davis, 3211 North 14th Ave. My lot is right about here. And Anderson came through and started tearing down trees a couple of years ago. I went down and stood and was threatened by one of his excavators trying to stop it so I could get a court order to halt it because that bank needs to be stabilized. Three houses up from me, they've hauled in 10 to 20 dump truck loads of dirt and concrete to stabilize that bank to their lot line. They were losing their lot. If they come in and take all the, the trees off of that, that's the only thing that's stabilizing that bank right now. Uh, the man said 35, 40 feet. I think he's a little shy on that, but I don't dare argue any <laughs> because I had to go down a rope to get down there. I'm concerned. My wife has emphysema. We've lived there 40-some years. I'm concerned about, one, the dust. Now, if you're bringing in wet soil, there's going to be no dust. But when you haul out the dry soil, is something going to be done to abate the dust. Also, I've been told that the World Herald said it was going to be a concrete recycling plant. That is extremely noise. 
noisy and dusty. What kind of abatement are they going to have for noise and for dust on that concrete plant? I think that'll be further north of where I am, down behind the uh, old uh, grain bins, silos, they called them. But I'm just concerned that I want to address those issues. I don't want to have to go out and uh, do massive work to stabilize my bank. Now, I have dumped tree limbs down the bank and brush to stabilize the bank. Nothing that's inorganic, nothing that won't decay over time. So if that's a crime, I'm admitting it today. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, okay, that's fine. But I did it to try to stabilize that bank, keep it from washing away. Part of my bank was starting to wash. It isn't washing anymore because I've got it stabilized enough. Those are my two concerns. I don't know if I'm an opponent or a proponent, but that's just two concerns that I have. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Any others, opponents? Uh, Bob Edwards, 1476 Spencer, 3209 North 16, 3207, 3211, 1481 Spencer, and four other properties in the area. Well, I can't remember. My concern is, okay, yeah, my concern is the tan area. Uh, once the dirt process or once that's done, what's the intended use for that area? Uh, two, the gliding of concrete. You're going to release heavy metals and silica. It could lead to various cancers or uh, lung diseases, so I'm concerned what mitigation factors, what, what process or steps could be put in place to suppress that, because it blows. And uh, three, uh, the only real value of this property is that it's H1 heavy industrial, and I can see why, and it's got that real spur. Without that real spur, there'd be no real value to this land at all. So I want to know, there are uh, uh, con their their, uh, concrete prefab company, uh, I talked to uh, the individual. He indicates that he's not going to be building a facility on that site. So as long as that's the case, I don't have a problem with it. But I do have a problem with the concrete, grinding it. What are the mitigation they're going to take to stop that dust from going all over the place? And the dirt, mitigation on that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. So, Any other? Yeah, um, I think you bring up some good points. What's your take of it? If the property just sat the way it is right now, would you be satisfied or...? I wouldn't be satisfied if it's set the way it is right now, but if it's set the way it is right now, at least the contaminants that are on there would not be released because you're not disturbing them. I would, uh, I would like to see that, one, mitigated. It should technically, it's not super fun level, but it's pretty close. <laughs> I'd like to see it capped, and uh, I'd like to see some sustainable use for it. But if it can't be capped, and if this project is the next best thing, I would like any mitigation factors that can be put in place to prevent health, deleterious health effects, or effects to my, my property, our property, because I've put quite a bit of money, or we have, into those properties, and I'd like to see them sustained. Great. Thank you. Yep. Any other opponents that wish to speak? My name is Cynthia Coleman, and I'm at 1480 Spencer. I'm the third generation at this house. I have two, two, two children, four grandsons, and all of us have some type of allergies. All of us have, our, our, our history has cancer in it. My mother just died uh, eight years ago from breast cancer. My grandmother died from breast cancer, and we do not know what type of things that will, they will be digging up for the neighborhood. I am concerned as many of my neighbors are concerned, is what's going to happen? You know, maybe I'll die and it'll be passed on to my grandchildren. We have known that cigarettes cause cancer. But in the beginning they said, oh, nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to happen, and people have died from cigarettes. What are these metals? What are these things are going to cause? Can they guarantee? Probably not. A guarantee saying that they cannot cause any problems with the people in the neighborhood. One gentleman said his wife has em emph emphysema. You know, there's a lot of older people in this neighborhood that have health issues. I'm 61 years old. 
I have my own health issues. And as I get older, as any one of us gets older, there's things that happen. And we need to protect those that are living in this neighborhood. Thank you. Any other opponents that wish to speak? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Tom, did you want to come up? We've got a lot of you information bet. for Eileen. Uh, go over your operation again for Eileen, and then you've got the wildlife, illegal dumping, trailers, crime, uh, bank stability, uh, dust, dust uh, air quality, if you can yep. address as many of those as you can. Absolutely. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, first of all, just a reminder, 95% of this site is currently heavy industrial. So any uses that we would be doing, it's currently properly zoned for that. Uh, when we came to the planning department to talk about acquisition of the site, it was at the planning department's request that they said, why don't you combine these 63 plus parcels into one lot? And then also, because there is some of this remnant odd zoning in a couple of the corners, why don't you ask for rezoning so all of it becomes heavy industrial? So again, a lot of the issues that are being expressed, and just as a fact, is currently heavy industrial and, and our use is not going to change what it currently is. Having said that, the neighborhood has gotten used to a site that over time has seen a lot of dumping and has seen a lot of overgrowth and has seen a lot of trash. So our hope is uh, with entering this site and beginning the cleanup, you are going to see some dust and some issues as you're grinding concrete, which is not currently there but it's an allowed use, and within the federal and state guidelines, we are going to have to comply with the air quality requirements. Uh, those requirements are there that we're going to have to comply with. So again, are you going to see more than you're currently seeing because there's not concrete being ground? The answer is yes. On the other hand, are we doing anything illegal or that's going to fall outside of federal or state law? The answer is no. We're going to have to comply with all the rules that, that deal with that. The longer term, again, three years from now, once the site is cleaned up, the hope would be that with the ground crushed gravel uh, on most of the site, you're going to see less dust as trucks come and go. You're going to see less issues coming and going than you do now. Uh, I believe it was Mr. McGuire, one of the comments you had is that we're going to park uh, rusty old trailers down below, and again, we're going to be a detriment to the neighborhood. Uh, I think Mr. Meg had tried to indicate hopefully this would improve the site, and that is certainly our belief as well. Uh, we don't know of anybody that's going to come and, and lease a parcel down here for purposes of parking old dilapidated equipment. Our goal would be that we have active businesses that are uh, doing things for the betterment of Omaha. Again, a transloading facility, a trailer storage facility, things that, again, we're going to have a, a fence site, a secure site, and once it's initially cleaned up, uh, should be an improvement for the city of Omaha. Also, I believe Mr. Can you just clarify what trailer would you refer to it as trailer what? Sure, trailer storage. Yeah, just clarify what that is for the public. Uh, basically, you have trucks that as they're transporting goods to and from Omaha, they need temporary places between loads where they, where they can park until they can pick up again. Uh, this happens uh, sometimes at large warehouse facilities. If you go down at about uh, 26 and Q Street, obviously FedEx has a huge facility. They're running trucks in and out of there every day. Those are their active trucks, but at the extent they have inactive trailers, or they would have trucks that, again, are between maintenance or repairs. It might be a place where they're parking those temporarily while they're, while they're getting ready for reloads or refurbishment. That would be one example. So basically, there's no long-range storage of trailers there. Again, at this time, we have absolutely no users or leases lined up. Uh, we have a developer that's willing to take the risk of buying approximately 70 acres of land that's split over 63 parcels and does have uh, some environmental issues that has kept others away, but he's willing to, you know, he's looked at this and studied it, talked to the state and said, we think that over time, if you're cleaning it from south to north, we can overcome the issues that are currently there in terms of the debris and the trash, and again, by minimal disturbance of, of the ground. And again, I think this Mr. goes to Mr. Maggot's point. Um, somebody had asked, you know, couldn't we put apartments or something down there? Well, again, based on what the site was previously used for to try to over excavate in that area you're going to start digging up problems the goal is to clean up with what's there and leave the site pretty much at the elevation it's at other than whatever grading is needed to get the site to properly drain so now the the aggregate or the, the concrete that you're going to be break, broken up is that going to stay on site or is it going to be sold off as aggregate our goal is to use as much of it on site as we need and again there is a lot of concrete down there 
Uh, but for the roadway from north to south, again, we're talking about a property that is over, uh, well, it goes from 16th to 13th uh, in terms of east-west, and it goes from Ames down to Locust from north-south. It is a large site. And to have trailer storage or those things where you need aggregate on the ground and gravel, that is going to use a lot of that product. Are there certain uh, things or techniques you can do when you're collecting this concrete to uh, minimize the dust that's floating around? You bet. I won't claim to be an expert on it, but I know Martin Marietta has a number of gravel mining operations that pop up regularly. And uh, I'm on a planning commission down in Sarpy, and one of the questions that comes up whenever uh, we get those requests for CUPs and SUPs for those is what kind of dust mitigation. And again, there's usually uh, watering mechanisms that, again, as it's being ground, the water uh, keeps the dust down. Similarly, with the roadways, dust mitigation, you run the trailer tanks down there with the waterways to keep things dry. So again, we, we fully intend to comply with all federal and state law, and believe me, that's a, that's a very <coughs> regulated area. Um, and ideally, our goal is to clean this up from what it currently is and put it back into productive use. I think some of the other questions that we had, again, what will this do positively for the neighborhood? Uh, one thing, hopefully it's going to create jobs. Again, you currently have a site of over 70 acres that has just been used basically as a debris bin and currently continues to be used for trash. And uh, the goal is we're going to have active businesses down there, people coming and going. It'll be secured and uh, hopefully bring some jobs to that area. And again, ultimately clean up the site, which will be good for everybody. Uh, in terms of one of the other questions we had uh, on the fourth generation, I believe, Ms. Coleman, what is it we're going to be digging up? Again, our goal is to minimally disturb the site, but there are piles and piles of concrete that we are going to have to take down in order to grind those and get those addressed. But the goal is not to be digging up anything from below to the extent we don't have to, because again, uh, the less we disturb the site, it's our goal is to keep it pretty much in a flat area the way it is for use uh, once it's been cleaned up. Any other questions, Mr. Chair? You think I may be missed oh, along? St uh, Stephen had brought up the bank stability with the, with the trees. Yeah, I don't have uh, the plan for the bank stabilization at this point, but we certainly have no goal uh, to cause the properties that are above us to slide down below us. And as part of what we're doing in terms of the trees and the brush and getting those cleaned up, uh, we'll be working with our engineers and experts as to how to stabilize those banks the best we can. Uh, again, the goal is to get proper drainage on the site. And again, part of the proper drainage is going from top to bottom as well. Yeah, Stephen, only if somebody, if anybody wants to talk, I've closed the public hearing, so only, you can only come forward if a board member asks you to come forward. Stephen Davis again. This uh, concrete recycling plant would only be temporary until those uh, piles of concrete get taken care of, and then it will be gone. Again, currently we have no users for the site that are planning okay. to locate there, but the one thing we know we have to do is, and it'll take probably three years at least, is clean up all the rubble that's there, and that will require a concrete crushing operation. Temporary Stephen, one is fine. I'd ask the town of the... Did you give your name and address again, please? Stephen Davis, 3211 North 14th Ave. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Uh, I would like the Planning Commission to really consider hard if they're going to put a permanent concrete recycling plant. But if they're just going to recycle the mess that Anderson brought in there, yes, I'm for that. Okay. Yeah. And, and again, currently the long-term plans beyond cleanup, they're not known. We don't have tenants for the site. We haven't contemplated selling any pad sites off. Again, if we were to do that, we would come back to this body at some point to get a replat if we were ever going to sell lots or parcel it out. Again, I would go back to my initial comments, 95% of this site is currently heavy industrial. So to the extent that you can have uh, cement crushing operations, cement operations, other things that are maybe of a concern, those are currently allowed uses. So again, we're not asking for more than what's there. Uh, we just ask for an opportunity to clean up this site and hopefully bring it back into productive use for the city of Omaha. Thank you. Tom, one last question. Sandra came down here today. I don't know if you can answer this or not, but she was worried about wildlife. You know, Sandra, and I'm going to, I have that note here and I missed it. Um, first of all, 
the site as it's currently there is probably better for wildlife now than it will be when we're done simply because we are going to clear a lot of the trees and the shrubbery and the things that are growing down below that wildlife naturally comes to. Having said that, the topography you have going from the bottom to the top, you're still going to maintain a number of trees uh, in that area. We're certainly not clear cutting the site. Uh, what's the old Dr. Seuss cartoon where they cut down every tree? Um, we're not going to be doing that. Again, because of the bank stabilization and other reasons, there will be a number of trees that are certainly left there. And uh, I'm sure there'll still be plenty of wildlife on a 70-acre site, but it will certainly not be uh, the way it is today in terms of the amount of underbrush and things that wildlife probably currently enjoys. Thank you, Tom. You bet. Can Mr. Egan come down? Tom Egan, 10220 F Street, Parkway Properties. Um, I think few business people would probably take on a project like this, and, mm -hmm. and I know that you have the capability, and I, I applaud you for doing this, I think. I haven't seen the finished product, but right. um, certainly it's a huge undertaking, with, not without its risks, and I know that your intentions are good. Um, can you tell us that, that you'll keep regular hours so if, if I'm, I'm, I'm only concerned about the, the, the noise and the dust and that kind of stuff but if you'd work with the neighbors and work to you know if, if it's loud you know do it during, during business hours and limit it on the weekends is that possible yes it's possible we're going to keep regular working hours it'll be from uh in the summertime a little bit earlier probably 7 a.m uh to dark no probably till 5 p.m so just a regular shift of this the concrete crushing. Okay, and in your business, you know how to keep the dust down as best you can. It, it helps, I'm sure, that you're you're below the neighborhood. It does help, but we exist in our manufacturing companies. We exist in environments that are much more highly residential than this, and we do everything uh, within EPA and OSHA um, requirements to mitigate that dust with um, machinery, for, uh, vacuums. Uh, water, everything. So it's not something that we could ignore. Um, any idea how many employees, once a, once you level the site and say in, in five years, do you, you just don't, I guess you don't know what users are going to be there yet. No, it's hard to say, but it's going to be a, a flat industrial storage facility. So those um, jobs would be unknown at this point in time. We can't get you to build a sports court there? No. Nope. There you go. Okay. You already got one? Yeah. Is that what happened? Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Welcome back. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Any other comments or questions from the board? All right. Eric? Okay. Uh, quite a few items that were discussed. I'm not going to go through everything. Um, I just do want to point out and reiterate that, yes, the majority of the site does have HI zoning. Um, <clears throat> they could come in today probably just plat this administratively into one lot for the areas that are zoned HI and we wouldn't be here before the planning board or city council for the rezoning change but um, for them to maximize all the land that they own uh, those small portions that are zoned residentially is is the primary reason we are here today <clears throat> that land that is zoned residentially is designated as industrial in the future land use map so the proposed plat and rezoning is in compliance with the Omaha master plan um, we did not review any specific operation, any specific operating characteristics, site plans, operating hours. We do not have that information. As I said, they do, they do not have any operators at this time. Um, but as we move forward, you know, all of the city department, all of the applicable, you know, city departments would be involved with the permitting and um, approvals for this site, including public works and planning and um, on any other applicable um, jurisdiction, building code requirements, environmental state, Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality. Uh, we do have perf certain performance standards in the zoning code that does address uh, noise allowances, and there's certain decibel readings that are um, measured based on the zoning district of the site and what the adjacent zoning districts are. So there are certain limitations and parameters that are laid out in the zoning code. Um, so they will be um, subject to those requirements. 
there are several uses that are allowed in in the industrial zoning we will have to specifically identify what those use types are whether it's a permitted use there's a put there's a few that could potentially need a conditional or special use permit and that would have to come back through the planning board and potentially on the city council but there are quite a few that are permitted uses in h i we would encourage to keep as many healthy trees as possible there are buffer yard requirements between industrial zone sites and residential sites some of that is due to the grade change you know from the residential properties down to the industrial sometimes the the screening and the buffer yard requirements that the zoning code has in place sometimes it's difficult to achieve that ultimate desired buffer yard you know it's more it's better suited if sites were on equal grades but there are buffer yard requirements that will have to be followed i don't think i have much more than that unless you had any specific questions for me so i'll read the recommendation report if you do have questions just let me know staff recommends approval of the rezoning from r4 r5 r7 and hi to hi approval of the preliminary plat subject to compliance with all applicable stormwater management ordinances and policies and approval of the final plat subject to the condition of preliminary plat approval I just want to uh, address the neighborhoods uh, uh, everybody has brought very good concerns to the table here and I think from the city's perspective uh, uh, bringing us all together under one parcel and under one zoning I think is very beneficial it, it uh, in the case which I don't expect to happen that there would be non-compliance issues it's a lot much uh, I would say much easier to to uh, correct them and hold them accountable but having said that you know we have a a, uh, a respected member of the business community of Omaha was invested tremendously in this community and I think with with the things that that uh, the track record they have in the community having them being in charge of this property and looking for a better use for the future I think is going to long term benefit for the whole neighborhood well said okay I'll move for the approval of the rezoning from R4 R5 R7 and HI to HI approval of the preliminary plat subject to compliance with all applicable stormwater management ordinances and policies and approval of the final plat subject to the condition of preliminary plat approval second I have a motion and a second Lisa will you please record the vote Magan yes Carnes yes Rosacker yes Pete yes Moore yes Morris yes Mr. Chair yes motion approved Agenda item number six, case C10-19-172, C12-19-173, applicant Kiewit Infrastructure Comp Company. I'll wait just a second. Okay, the applicant is Kiewit Infrastructure Company. It was on for consent, uh, on the consent agenda. The request is preliminary and final plat approval of Builders District 2, a minor plat inside city limits with rezoning from DS to CBD. Property is located within an ACI overlay district, location west of 16th and Birch Streets. Are you representing the applicant? I am. All right. Ted Zetsman. Nala Companies, 2285 South 67th Street, on behalf of the applicant. Uh, we've made uh, a lot of progress in the Builders District uh, that's visible. You've seen uh, the steel structure on the Keywood Headquarters building is uh, up to five floors out of, out of the seven. There's also been uh, progress in acquiring properties in the district as contemplated in the redevelopment agreement. And we're here to uh, continue that platting to create those redevelopment sites and continue the redevelopment in the district. Um, we are generally in agreement with the recommendations of the staff report. I do want to note that uh, the first one uh, of the recommendation requires us to coordinate uh, with city staff regarding pedestrian and bicycle access uh, through the vacated Burt Street. And while we are absolutely in agreement that there should be pedestrian and bicycle access through the Builders District, uh, we note that Burt Street doesn't uh, exist 
uh, east of 16th Street, and we would prefer that there be flexibility in that route. There's been some uh, early discussions with planning staff on uh, what that might look like, where it might go, um, but there isn't a firm plan that's been presented yet uh, as to how that works, and so we think that might be might be better uh, might be a better route. We're not sure. So other than that, we request uh, uh, your approval today. I'm here for questions. Any other proponents that wish to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents that wish to speak? Please give your name and address. Hi, I'm Julie Harris with Bike Walk Nebraska, 1905 Harney Street. Um, appreciate your comments about the bicycle and pedestrian connectivity, and that's what I want to touch on briefly here today. Um, this development is fantastic in that it increases the density in this neighborhood, which is great, but um, we want to make sure that it's very clear that maintaining that connectivity for people biking and walking is crucial, whether it's in this particular project or any project that comes before you. Uh, I just wanted to point out very quickly, this is, um, this is a heat map. Basically, this shows um, the usage of Burt Street, all of our streets actually, by people on bikes that use um, Strava, which is an app on their phone that they put on their bikes as they're riding. Um, the, white, the wider the line, the more heavily used the street is. And on this map, you can see Burt Street here leading up and up to Benson as our most heavily traveled bike route in the city based on this map. And we also have data um, from our recent um, bike counts that shows um, not only was it the most highly used bike route in the bike counts done by the planning department in 2016, the number um, is basically equal to the daily bikes, number of bikes on the Bob Carey Bridge. So we know that this route is extremely heavily used um, by data and just anecdotally. So maintaining that connection through for bikes and pedestrians is crucial. And uh, we hope that um, the developer can work with the city to make sure that that happens. Creates the popularity of that route. Uh, it connects to downtown, which is a is a good corridor there for getting biking to work. Uh, connects up to Benson, obviously, which is a <coughs> great uh, destination and entertainment district. And it's a safe street. It's been designated as a bike route and has been such for, gosh, probably eight years now at least. Um, and there it, are there bike lanes in, in, in that? There corridor? are bike lanes on portions of it. There, there's different. Um, different infrastructure on different sections of it. Uh, it also serves as a critical connection to bike to the ballpark. So during the College World Series, they've parked thousands of bikes, preventing more cars coming downtown. And lots of those folks come right down Burt Street um, to get on Fahey to park right there by the stadium. So, Julie, what's the number of bikes that are using that on a daily basis, if you've got that? Um, I know that during the bike counts in 2016, uh, it doesn't, uh, about 200 per day is what it says here. Okay. And that was in uh, a two, three day count in 2016. Now is that a back and forth on some bikes or like if they come down that route and then they go home that route, is that, in, is that? Yeah, the counts are done um, it, for two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, and then on a weekend, it's a pretty scientific model that they use. Hmm. So yeah, it's a nationally based model that they use to count those. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Mm -hmm. So right now, Bird Street doesn't go all the way through, correct? So they're taking that to to probably 16th, 16th and, and then, then down, mm -hmm, or into downtown, or as in this case, to, to north downtown as that becomes more developed. It'll right. be a critical connection. Not to mention Creighton with those kids that live in Gifford Park. I mean, it just serves a lot of functions. What's the drawback of, you know, right now 16th Street is kind of the connection to either go north or south. What's mm -hmm. the drawback of that being 17th Street? Um, I don't know that there is one necessarily. 16th is a truck route, as I understand it, right. so um, that's probably a conflict that we would want to avoid. But at any rate, having the connections um, and not not having to go way out of the way is the most important thing. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Any other opponents that wish to speak? Hi there, Jason Coble, uh, 725 North 14th Street uh, in downtown. Uh, we own the property between um, 14th and uh, on 14th between Mike Fahey and Cumming Street, uh, part of the Saddle Creek Records development. We've been there for about 12 years. Um, here on behalf of 
myself and uh, also the North Downtown organization, um, you guys did receive a letter that we wrote from North Downtown, that is correct. I won't rehash any of that. Um, a couple things I wanted to personally kind of hone in on. Um, number one, I don't think closing a street is really a good idea ever, um, especially in a downtown area that's developing. It's becoming better all the time, obviously. This is going to add so much to it, but I don't feel that the closing of a street is necessary in order to make that happen. Um, that being said, I do see probably the writing on the wall that you guys are probably going to think this is okay. What I worry about is Bert becoming closed all the way down from basically from Creighton down to 16th Street. And we've got really, a, as, as Julie said, it's, it's used. A, a traveled street is, is gone. Um, and I, I just don't like to see that in a, in a developing area. Um, in addition to that, um, we seem to be finding out as a neighborhood, as a property owner, about all of these projects, about this, about moving the, um, the truck route over to 14th for a while. We're, we're finding out about all this stuff by construction street signs, 300-foot um, property notices, things like this. Um, we ha we want to be, we've been there a long time. We have, su we have such a great neighborhood. Uh, like we're, we, we, we play and work well, very, very well with each other. Um, and it just, it does feel like the development that's coming in is just kind of putting their head down and getting through it. And we're there, um, we're there to work with people, give ideas. We've been, we've been there since it was, I've been there since I felt like it was blighted and near nothing. There's been people that have been there much longer than me. Other Julie will come up and speak to that after this, but we've been there a long time. We care about it a lot. We live there. We're there all the time. So we welcome the meetings and not finding out about this stuff in, in uh, notices. I'll leave it at that unless you have any questions. Which property is yours again? Uh, it's the Saddle Creek Records Development. Uh, it's got Slow Down, Film Streams, Slow, Urban Slow, Outfitters, Slow all that. Down. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. it's on That's 14th Street between Mike Street. Fahey and Cumming, built in 2000. Seven. A lot of bikes out here too. Absolutely. Destination. Yep. A lot of bikes. Scooters. Way too many. <laughs> <laughs> but they're coming. <laughs> yes. yes. Very, very well traveled area. Gets better every day. Any complaints about the the bike access to to your to your destination? Um, no, I wouldn't say there's complaints about it. Um, I think it. There's probably complaints. You, you can dig in as far as you want and get complaints about the transportation of the whole area. It could be thought out better. It could be better. Um, biking on coming is extremely dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, I get, I hear that. I see that. I drive Driving down coming. Driving on coming is completely yeah. dangerous. Yeah, I, I drive down coming every day. I see bikes going in the lane. There, that's crazy man's gig to me, but it happens. So, Bert fills that that purpose once you get down that far. For sure. Are you supportive of the Kiwit uh, development? Oh, beyond part? supportive. Yeah, yeah. They're great. Yeah, great. Okay. I mean, like, my, my point is I'd, I'd like to know them better. I think our whole neighborhood would like to know them better. Um, what, you know, I, it looks great. But what they've done so far is great with the training center. New building. looks. It looks like it's going to be fantastic from the renderings. More stuff around it. It's all great, great news for the neighborhood. You bet. I just want everything to be done as smart as we can. and. Just make sure that we're happy holding hands together for sure. the future. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Jason. Any other opponents that wish to speak? Julie Prescott Burgess. I live at 1709 coming in. My family owns the property from 1709 to 1721 coming. I have a great rooftop deck that looks over Burt Street, and we sit up there in the afternoons and marvel at the life in that neighborhood, um, including the excitement of the College World Series, the Summer Arts Festival, which was down uh, near the ballpark this summer, the fireworks on New Year's Eve. There's a lot that happens down in that part of the city, and especially on Bird Street. Um, I don't want to be anti-development, but I, uh, as I say, I live, I make my living there. I live there with my husband and my handicapped sister, and we ourselves walk Burt Street, we bike Burt Street, I push Jana's wheelchair down Burt Street, and contrary to popular opinion, it does exist east of 16th Street. It's just closed right now for building the Kiwit uh, property. We've walked 
through there many times on our way over to the Cambria Hotel. They're a good customer. Jason's business is a good customer of ours, and we try to be good neighbors down there. We feel like this is one of those things that sort of hits us out of the blue. We didn't realize until we read the really tiny, tiny print on the 300-foot notice that we got in the mail last week that the purpose of this was to vacate that block of Bird Street. And my feeling is, as Jason said, if we vacate this block of Bird Street, it will not exist east of 16th Street, and it won't exist west of 16th Street either as Creighton continues to develop um, their athletic fields, at least that's what their current master plan shows that as. So my, that's my concern is um, it, it also is the overflow vehicular traffic lane for Cumming Street. When people are leaving events at TD Ameritrade or CHI Health Center or any big event that's happening down there to avoid the heavy traffic on Cumming Street, they'll travel on Burt and they'll also go you know, to Chicago or Cass or Webster farther to the south. This plan is, is actually going to push enough extra traffic onto Cumming Street that they'll have to put a traffic light in at 17th and Cumming, which is probably a overdue, but that's, that's our block and we know that the traffic will back up in front of our home. Um, it is right now with the construction project that's going on down there now anyway. And so th those are my concerns. They're expressed by Jason. They're expressed by Julie. What happens to the people who live and work and um, exist down there every day? It does, it's a change of life for us. So that's kind of a selfish request. But what I wanted to close with was um, a couple years ago at our annual neighborhood meeting that happens before the College World Series, because obviously ours is a neighborhood that has to prepare for tens of thousands of extra bodies down there for those 10 wonderful days that Omaha celebrates every year. Julie Wallen-Ziegenbein from the Peter Kiewit Foundation and uh, representing Future Forward explained to us that with his dying breath, Peter Kiewit expressed regret for blocking 16th Street at Capitol Avenue to put a hotel there. And what that did to the north side of the downtown area all those years ago, and which it's still recovering from. Great people like Jason and Saddle Creek Records have invested a lot of money. Future Forward has created the Makerhood, which hosted the Hust Hutch Fest this weekend and brought even more people down there. So that was cutting one block off in our city the ramifications that it's had for decades. People in North Omaha will tell you how devastated they were by that. My city councilman, Ben Gray, would agree with me on that point. So this is now another block, and it may seem just like one block, but blocking off one block from a city that's pretty well laid out down there, I think is probably a mistake. I think developers are very imaginative and creative people. It also seems to me they can color within the lines. And I think the lines are pretty definite by the streets that were platted out in the early days of our city, some of which still exist and work in the way they were meant to work because of work of people like you. So that's all I had to say. I hope you would listen to us. I hope you would give some consideration to letting this go, feeling like the dominoes will just fall farther to the west. Great point that I never thought of. Thank you. In that. And that is, and that is, shutting off that access to 16th Street there. Because uh, I remember when that happened. I'm that old. Right? I remember when that happened, and I always thought this is really a dumb idea at the time. Now I'm not saying that this is a dumb idea either. In fact, I'm going to ask Public Works to come out and uh, come up and, and explain why why they think it's it's necessary to to block off this street. But that's a great point that you brought because you need a flow of traffic right for access points and um, but that was a very good point and I appreciate you mentioning that and I just wanted to, to make that statement so with that I'm gonna I'm, at some point I'll ask Public Works to come out and just explain why they they think it's important to block off that. What's your business on that street? Automatic Printing Company and we are open even though we're not shown in many maps of the city these <laughs> days. What do, you, what do you guys do? Uh, you print printing. things anything you need on paper including political <laughs> documents and we're a union shop so <laughs> <we're done laughs> You got it. Nice commercial. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents that wish to speak? Hi, uh, Ben Swan, 3515 Hawthorne. And um, 
I'm a huge fan of Kiwit. Thankful that you're moving your headquarters into the heart of our city. Um, I sold one of the lots that was assembled as part of this process um, to Kiwit. So I'm a big fan of that development. But creating the logic that there's already one long block there, creating another long block <coughs> is just flawed logic. Like you, That's just saying that it's already bad that Burt Street's cut east to 15th. So it's, it's just going to make it worse to stop it at 16th. That is a, it is a safe street for non-vehicular traffic that runs parallel to coming, and it's signaled at 16th and coming. So if you cut it off at 17th, you don't have a signaled intersection at 17th and coming. And so that pedestrian traffic around the events that are so critical to the success of that area and the bicycle traffic from Creighton University and from area employers is just going to have nowhere to go at 17th and coming. If, and if we want to have 16th, be connected between that near north development that's going on there with our downtown core, at least up to Capitol Street, then we can't stop that pedestrian and bicycle intersection from being a, a part of that connectedness. The city of Omaha master plan transportation element, you know, talks about an increase in connectedness along with that increase in density and we're creating a corporate island that everybody else is going to have to circulate around and a lot of those are one-way streets and so that circulation is going to be really inconvenient and there's going to be people that are making more decisions um, on foot and on bike and in a car that are just going to increase the um, amount of non non-functional traffic flow because of this and so just just because 15th is cut off at Burt Street doesn't mean like let's just go ahead and magnify that problem by cutting it off at 16th Street. That's, I'm a supporter of the Kiwit development, but this is not a good idea for the future. It's, it's going to inhibit de adjacent development, and it's going to inhibit retail. It's going to inhibit attracting millennial employees who want a connected infrastructure and a livable downtown core. and I just think that it's um, there's other ways to do it. You know, we've heard a lot, a lot of testimony from millennials in, on this board for, for a variety of different reasons, and particularly with the Blackstone District area. And, and a lot of those arguments that, that they make, because we don't worry about parking and traffic flow and everything, but they're walkers. They like to walk to their destination. And, and, and that may be true. you got a lot of uh, Creighton uh, students, obviously, in this area that, uh, that live uh, in that area. And so... You know, I don't. I'm, I'm not a millennial, obviously, so I, I don't. I can't pretend how to behave like a millennial. But if, if that's their their behavior is like to walk to their destinations, or I don't know that two blocks makes a makes a big difference there. It might, but I don't know that it would make a big difference to them. I, I think for me, the biggest thing is if you want to go north on 16th to a developed area, then if you go down Burt Street, you've got no way to get north of coming that's safe. So it's just that one block really there. I think it's a critical block. Yeah, it, 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 is, it is a very critical block. And not just as a millennial, but as a Creighton student, as an employer, as somebody who's trying to draw retail traffic and other commerce besides the corporate headquarters, which is wonderful. It's just, uh, it, it takes away from all those other aspects of building a connected, healthy city there. Uh, I had a retail business um, next to Jason's development for five years, and uh, I was a little before my time there. The area has, has developed a lot since then. Um, I'm up on 24th and Harney in an area that has got a lot of what the planning department calls long blocks, and those long blocks are problems for developing the areas. Do you see that area going forward as a strong retail area? I think that if we sever existing connections, we take away possibilities. So I, I'm not here to predict the future of what that would be, but I do know that it will remove options for other developers and it will remove options for our citizens and our tourists that come to our city. Thank you. That's all I have. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you. Any other opponents that wish to speak? Are there any other ones that... Yeah. Are there any other opponents that are going to speak today? Okay. This would be the last one. 
Hi, Benny Foltz, 1144 North 11th Street. Uh, I'm a board member of Bike Walk Nebraska with Julie, a uh, cycling safety instructor, a regular bike commuter and bike rider, and I'm the deputy director of Heartland Bike Share. We operate Heartland B-Cycle. Um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit uh, that's been based out of North Downtown since 2014, uh, right in, in opposition of the proposed plan. Uh, as a person with deep roots in North Downtown, uh, thrilled with the investment being made by the developers in the neighborhood. However, at the same time, uh, we run the only platinum-friendly, bicycle-friendly business in the state. Uh, and uh, currently, all six of our employees ride to work and uh, ride to and from work and for fun. Um, some ride every day, some ride a few times a week. Uh, but every single one of us rides through this intersection when accessing our office. Um, on a personal note, I ride through the intersection a fair amount, um, so I would hate to see it closed. Uh, the proposed plan severs the connection between Burt and 16th, which are two vital bike arteries in our community, um, approving the street vacation as planned without any accommodation for cyclists and pedestrians will harm our community, new developments north of coming and make daily life less safe for numerous individuals. Um, unfortunately, the proposed plan hurts transportation options, uh, does not demonstrate to the millennials that we uh, value cyclists and pedestrians, and is an investment that hurts our transportation network. So I'd urge you, the board, to not approve until it takes into account our uh, transportation needs of all. So don't cyclists like to w drive a little bit farther? Pardon? Isn't that what bicycling and enjoying bicycling is all about, is to just go a little bit farther? <laughs> That, that is certainly one way of looking at it. I ride, I'm, I'm more of a commuter, so when I leave, I'm looking to get to work. Uh, I'm not usually. How, how far out of the way are we talking for pedestrians and bike? Is, is, it, is it 500 yards? Well, with what staff is proposing that there be pedestrian and bike through there. access through the vacated Bird Street. So. So it's going to be our recommendations client. would. So you're okay with it as long as they available. keep their. As long as we can ride our bikes and walk through there safely. Okay. Yeah, with ease. What's your route right now? You take Bird to. My personal route? Yeah. Yeah, if I'm on Bird Street, I'll cut over at 16th then. And Down to Mike Bay here up to or north across coming. Yeah, in the mornings it's pretty busy, so I kind of just flow with traffic. Yeah. You know. Have you ever uh, hit a pedestrian? Pardon? Have you ever hit a pedestrian when you're riding your bike? Negative. Oh, good. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> I think that was the, was that it for the opponents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no others, I'm going to close the public hearing. Ted, did you want to come up? Thank you. And address whatever you wanted to address. Sure. Ted Zetsman, 2285 South 67th Street. So I just want to point out that what the piece that we're talking about is this section right here. In contrary. Bird Street doesn't, you know, TD Ameritrade is on vacated, as is the Saddle Creek Records is on vacated Bird Street. The Cambria Hotel, the Kiowa Parking Garage, it doesn't really go anywhere. And I think Julie's uh, heat map, which was very interesting, I, I, actually shows everybody coming to the hotline, coming down Burton and then going down 17th Street. That's where the majority of the bicycle traffic was actually, according to her map, uh, going. Even if they have the application. If they have the That's application. only the view with the application. Sure. So I haven't got the application. That's the only data, I guess, that we have. I don't ride today. a bike, but. Which way do you ride there? <laughs> I need air in my tires. So, just want to keep that. I think we should keep that in, in perspective of you know successful development blocks and what they consist of, and we're trying to do the same here. We do you, you don't see any problem, Ted, of, of being able to keep that connection open for I, We don't have a problem with the connection. We just don't know that that's necessarily the best place. It doesn't actually appear that that's where the majority of the traffic is going, and we think there's probably better cycle so solutions than the improvements that are there. We've seen some much more robust uh, and interesting, and we've had uh, heard uh, not in necessarily in terms of this project, but other projects or around yeah. the city, what they want to do for cycle tracks, and it sounds real interesting, but that's not necessarily it. Well, and, 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 you know, it's always been since we were young. You were young. Once. Um, this is in no way should be compared to cutting off 16th Street. This is this is a different, a different case and a whole different um, area, uh, so to speak. But uh, but I think all the 
uh, comments and concerns are, are, are valid. So it's good that everybody's taking part in this discussion. I would mention also there is a tra updated traffic study and it doesn't show uh, any negative. We do have a track engineer if you would like to hear him speak as well. Um, I think there is a recommendation for a signal at 17th and coming at full build out at some time in the future, 2025 I believe it is, but it doesn't show any negative impacts currently because it really doesn't go anywhere. Okay, thank you. Ted, can you, can you sure. just explain what the rationale is for closing the street? I mean, Creating the development blocks that we, that we would need to, the redevelopment of that area. Because you want to build on that particular Correct. land that is currently Bird Correct. Street. Correct, as all the blocks to the east have done. But maintaining a pedestrian and I think that there's we would I think we think that there should be pedestrian bicycle connectivity through there. We don't know if it's exactly on the Burt Street or where it should be, and so we feel like it's constrained without necessarily a plan as to where it would be, and if it's even the best place for it. I thought it was on Bird Street. I'm not sure what you mean by the best. You're not sure if it's the best place for it. If the city's requiring that there's some. The city is requesting it. that's what we're saying. Is that we don't know that that's necessarily the best place. A lot of the traffic is going down 17th. Fahey is the new spine. That's where mm -hmm. a lot of this happens. That's where the bike and pedestrian. That's that's the way this thing lays out from TD Ameritrade um, going west. Are you able to bike through then, Fahey? Is there is it bike friendly on the north side of Morrison Stadium right there then as you continue to go past? I don't know if that's a question for you. Or I, that'd be a question for, I don't know, for Creighton. I know they do use Bird Street currently, but I, you know, Creighton's got a whole bunch of other plans that I'm not, you know, that, that are not part of this. Okay. Thank you, Ted. Mm -hmm. Any uh, additional comments or questions from the board? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Ryan Haas with the Public Works Department. Ryan, just uh, just question. You know, I don't. I, I'm not necessarily opposed to it, but but just to maybe answer some of the questions or concerns people had with regards yep. to blocking off access going west as these yep. developments might start to come online going west as well. Um, because it is already terminated at, at, at 16th Street anyway, right? Yes. So, you know, we're talking about one or two blocks here. So can you talk about going west and, and what you see maybe as public works um, and, that, and, the, and the access of Burke Street um, going west? Yeah, so, and I guess just for a little bit of background, uh, because it hasn't been mentioned yet, the vacation of Burke between 15th and 16th was agreed to in a redevelopment agreement as approved by City Council in 2000, December of last year. So that, that was already approved. Uh, as part of that redevelopment agreement, further vacations of Burt Street were at least contemplated um, with certain stipulations regarding um, further evaluation of the impact of each subsequent proposed vacation. So uh, this is the next one. Um, it, so it has not been agreed to, but certainly um, city staff feels, as, as has been discussed, um, that pedestrian and bicycle connection is still important through this um, on this next block between 16th and 17th. Uh, from a traffic standpoint, yeah, it's concerning. Um, anytime, any vacation, we, it's done on a case-by-case -case basis, and in this case, that's why we recommended the uh, submission of a, a, a traffic study, and we haven't evaluated that yet. It's, it's currently in the evaluation process, so uh, while th that hasn't been agreed to, it, it, again, that's part of the evaluation here is, is figuring out what exactly is going to happen with um, not just the new trips that this development will generate, but the rerouted trips resulting from the vacation or proposed vacation between 16th and 17th. Um, this did would be we, the last. We already cut off the, the, the truck route from 14th Street to, as well. I mean, that was was it 14th Street that was. The, there are a lot of discussions right now as far as the the truck route, and there's several mul there are multiple projects that uh, are concerned about it. There, there's um, at least one study going on right now, so. I don't have that information right off the top of my head, but, but that's certainly um, an ongoing discussion with multiple parties. But just to go back um, with the background in place now, I, I would suggest that any vacation um, subsequent west of 17th, that would be the last, that's the last connection um, on Burt Street that doesn't involve a major street, a major arterial street. Um, it does provide a lot of 
um, options for, for the local trips, for the interior, for the circulation between North Downtown and, and, and the Creighton campus. Um, cutting off anything west of 17th from a vehicular standpoint would result in essentially forcing all the trips that would otherwise circulate on local streets where it's most, most appropriate and safest to do so. It would force them all up to Cumming Street and just add additional turns and, and conflict points and things that um, I, the case could be made that that's not really necessary because we have the good connection and it kind of flies in the face of all the things that we push for as far as generally that, that the master plan pushes for from a connectivity standpoint. So um, we don't have a proposal yet that, that shows that. We haven't heard uh, of anyone requesting that specifically, vacating west of 17th, <coughs> be subject to all these, these same processes, but with um, a lot of additional concern given that this that's the last link between North Downtown and Creighton. Ryan, um, any additional comments or questions before we hear from Eric? Eric? Okay. I don't have too much to add. Uh, Ryan had mentioned that all improvements identified in the final approved traffic study must be provided. Um, you know, block of Burt Street between 16th and 17th, as has been mentioned multiple times, is part of a signed bike route with dedicated bike lanes and is along a proposed multi-use trail corridor in the City of Omaha Master Plan. Um, staff is recommending that the vacation of Burt Street is acceptable, although we, um, you know, we remain uh, on the condition that, you know, there, there should be a dedicated public bicycle and pedestrian connectivity through the vacated area of Burt Street. Now that exact location, we can definitely work with the applicant on that specific location, um, but we think it's very important. <clears throat> the rezoning to uh, from DS to Central Business District is appropriate for um, this area. There's already existing ACI overlay in place. So with that being said, unless you have any further questions for me, staff recommends approval of the rezoning from DS to CBD, approval of the preliminary plat subject to the six conditions in the recommendation report, and approval of the final plat subject to the conditions of preliminary plat approval and submittal of an acceptable final subdivision agreement prior to City Council. Okay, do we have a motion? A motion for approval, approval of the rezoning from DS to CBD, approval of the preliminary plat subject to the six conditions of the recommendation report, and approval of the final plat subject to conditions of the preliminary plat and submittal of an acceptable final subdivision agreement. Second. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you record the vote, please? Carnes? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Pate? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Maggot? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Moving on, we're going to take agenda item number 9 and 24 together. Eric? Yes. Okay. Yes. Agenda item number 9, case C12 19 178, applicant James T. Smith, Sr., request. Preliminary plat approval of Ponca Hills Estates, a subdivision outside city limits with waivers to sections 5384D lot frontage, 5393 street surfacing, and 5399 sidewalks. Property is located within the ED Northern North Hills Environmental Resources Overlay District. Location, Northwest and Northern Hills Drive and 66th Street. And agenda item number 24, case C8-19-188, applicant James T. Smith, Sr., request approval of a special use permit to allow development in the ED North Hills Environmental Resources Overlay District. Location, Northwest and Northern Hills Drive and 66th Street. May we hear from the applicant. Good afternoon, Mark Westergaard <coughs> with the ENA Consulting Group, uh, 10909 Mill Valley Road. Um, this piece is uh, in that Northern Hills uh, area, north of Northern Hills Drive. The street you see along the uh, east side is 66th Street. Uh, I should also mention that uh, Jim Smith, who is the owner and the developer, is also here uh, this afternoon. Um, and kind of a thread between a previous project, this, uh, uh, this parcel of ground was purchased by Jim from Virgil Anderson. So. And actually, Virgil Anderson is the is the neighbor to the to the west of this property. So, um, but it, the proposal before you is a acreage subdivision, 17 lots on 23 acres, 
they're all a minimum of one acre. Um, they'll be serviced by a uh, public water system, which is supplied by the uh, Papio Missouri River NRD, and then they'll have on-site wastewater treatment uh, systems or septic systems. So the general layout of the site has a cul-de-sac on the north. There really isn't any uh, place to connect that street to, either going to the west or to the north. 66th Street is effectively uh, just serving several acreages to the north uh, and really doesn't have a high probability at all of ever going through. Uh, however, Douglas County and, and part of the recommendation from staff is that 66th Street uh, must be paved. Uh, it is to the correct grade. Uh, Douglas County regraded it several years ago, so it is to the correct grade. It just needs surfacing on it, and we have agreed to do that. Um, and then on the, uh, the lower side, uh, you'll see a street that goes through, and it actually goes through to nowhere is what it looks like, but uh, in the Smoky Ridge subdivision to the, uh, over on uh, 72nd Street in Northern Hills Drive, there is a street stubbed out that is in this, this location. And so the idea is that when the Virgil Anderson parcel, if it ever is developed, those two uh, would be connected and there would be a through street there. So um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's very similar to the Smoky Ridge development to the west and the Northern Hills Estate development to the, to the south, or Northern Hills Estates to the south. Um, there are 10 conditions that the staff has put on this. We, uh, don't have a problem with uh, any of them. Uh, we'll work with staff to get them all resolved. Um, so uh, we would request your approval this afternoon. Thank you. Any other proponents that wish to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents that wish to speak? If you all wish to speak, do you want to come down and sit up front? That'll help things go a little quicker if you plan on speaking. Richard Scott Kemp, uh, 13326 North 66th Street. And my property is along the north side of this whole development. And my main concerns are with the drainage going off this area of the site, off the north end. We currently have a culvert on our property that goes underneath our driveway. And when, you, when we have heavy runoff from a heavy rainfall, sometimes that stormwater drainage will run across our driveway and wash out the gravel surface of the driveway and also the soil on the north side of our driveway. And then also we have a lot of drainage that comes out and comes off the northeast side of this site. And there's a culvert in a ditch or there's a culvert underneath our driveway that drains a ditch to the south and that drains off to the north. And the drainage on this site has been washing out the soil down to a depth of about three feet to get down to the level of the culvert. So I think something needs to be done to control the erosion so it doesn't keep eroding further to the north to wash out our driveway. And then also I noticed in their proposal, they're providing some detention basin. Let's see, I have a grading plan here. Oh, it's right underneath. They're providing some detention basins to handle the runoff coming from these new, newly paved streets. And I'm proposing that they do something similar to slow down the drainage that's coming off the north side. Seems like there needs to be some type of detention here just to slow that down so that it doesn't fill up the area that's just south or yeah, south of our driveway. And there's also they also did a similar detention basin down on the south side of the site to handle that problem. And then the other concern I, I have is when this whole Part of 66th Street is paved. I believe the current development is only going to pave to south or just north of the new street they're putting in. And we're concerned that it's going to wash out the gravel surface before, after it comes off the end of that paved area. And it could potentially wash out all of our neighbors' access 
to the north just due to the increased velocity of the runoff and the, the volume of the runoff since there's uh, there's more impervious covers there. It's hard to get runoff in that area, right? Is there already runoff coming? Yeah, there's there? already runoff in the drainage ditch along there. Um, and then off this, this corner of their property, that's where we've had the erosion problem with washing out the area and that, that where the area where it washed out keeps moving farther north toward our driveway. And the other concern, they show the buildable areas on these lots. And this lot on the lot number 13 here comes a lot closer to our property line and our house is about 68 feet from this, our south property line. So we're concerned about how close that is really getting to, to our house, just to the north. And I'm wondering if they could just have the buildable area be cut off further to the south so it aligns with the other buildable area. Um, I think that's all the concerns that I had at this point. Okay. Oops, I'll leave that here. If any of the other neighbors had comments they wanted to make? Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Anybody have questions? Any other opponents that wish to speak? Hi, I'm Larry West, 6600 Northern Hills Drive. Um, looking at this plot, I live just just to the east of this developed area, and I put my properties adjacent to this area up here. Uh, my concern is that the, the road itself, Northern Hills Drive, it's a two-lane paved road. It's got 10-foot uh, wide lanes. Uh, rather narrow shoulders in places. The road is, traffic has picked up substantially over time. It, it's got multi-uses. We've got you know, people on the street. We've got, a, we've begin, begun to pick up a lot of cut through traffic from Highway 75, people wanting to go to the west and they want to avoid going down to 680 and then coming back up. Uh, so they come through our street and uh, we usually aren't too careful about speed. Um, we also have a lot of uh, heavy trucks that have started coming through here also and cutting through. Uh, we've got just right here, right, I guess right here, there's a very steep hill and at the entrance to Northern Hills Estate, there's also a very steep hill that's no sight distance as you go over the top of it. For our place, it's uh, can be very, very scary at times trying to pull out and have a car come over that hill and slow down in time. If we're, if we're, you know, we've been many times we pulled out and gone to the left, and by the time you got out on the road itself, there's a car right behind you on your bumper. You don't even see it when you first start coming out. Um, the road is also used by a lot of farm equipment. We had a, a semi loading up hay bales there this last week, 16 foot wide load, and you <coughs> had to go over these hills to leave. So essentially, he took up took up both lanes. You know, there's no no uh, traffic spotters for him. Anything, anybody coming over these 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 hills would. Could, there's a good potential for an accident. We've got the 66th Street. Just coming over the hill from our place toward that is a, you know, you have a very short time to see what's going to happen at that intersection. Um, also, the next hill over right there at Northern Hills Estates. Traffic coming and going from Northern Hills Estates Right now, there's like 40 houses that are all using that, that exit there. Very short side distance for them pulling out. Many times I've had to slam on my brakes not knowing whether the person was gonna stop or not. Um, it's, uh, I, think, I just feel that uh, Northern Hills Drive is just inadequate for what we're being asked to be, to be done on it here. This is, this is concentrating more traffic on it. 
Northern Hills is constant, Northern Hills Estates is concentrating traffic on it. Um, both of these sites more than likely are going to double in size in the next few years, depending on how the, the market goes. Um, I really would think it would, I would like to see some conditions made that the site distancing distances at these hills be improved for this for these developments because it's not safe right now. Somebody is going to get hit. It's just if somebody comes over the hill and they're not watching, they won't have time to stop when they do notice that somebody coming by. Um, I would strongly. It, it's just, it just isn't safe the way it is. And now we're, we're talking about doubling, tripling traffic on the street from what it was. And it's just, it's just becoming more and more likely we're going to have some accidents there. And I'd like to see that avoided if possible. So that's, that's all I have. Thank, Thank you, Larry. You. Any other opponents that wish to speak? Yeah, uh, my name is John Roop. And I live at 6610 Northern Hills Drive, which is, uh, let's see if it's going to be up on here, where it says John Roop. On the <laughs> 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 and, and Larry is correct that we have had trouble with uh, the traffic because these are T intersections. As a matter of fact, when we bought our property, 66th Street went straight to Northern Hills Drive. And they had a, uh, uh, a school and some other things back there that use this street and they were so afraid the kids were going to get killed at this T intersection that they moved it down here and changed the road and actually cut off from our part of our property but um, when this road was here there were no accidents while we lived there and the month that this got finished there was a, a tragic accident down here he, he didn't die but uh, so it is uh, it's a road where uh, I think the it's 40 miles per hour, but people, when they don't see a sign and there's hills, you can't see that well. And at night, there's um, there's a lot of uh, deer um, and other wildlife in the area, and it's uh, I mean we've got one dead deer right in front of our house right now from people flying over the road. Um, I'd, I'd like to say I'm not necessarily a proponent. I mean, I don't blame anybody that wants to make money off the land or anything like that. I just think the things need to be addressed. Uh, this road starts up here. Uh, I don't, you can't see the contour lines, but this is 1,272 feet above sea level and it goes down here. Uh, 1274 this is a, uh, a severe grade and when you put this asphalt road there this that water is going to wash right down that road and right across there and that's going to create problems at that T intersection there uh, also is there anybody from the county here represent the county I did, did you guys the planning board of the city design the streets and everything the pavement for the streets? We could probably have Public Works answer the, that question. Public I'm not Works? Sure. Okay. They can come up here shortly. Well, all this land, which was agricultural and they actually had cattle on it, it all drains from this high point right, right in here all the way down to this street. So all this, um, you're going to get drained. I, I suppose they've got a retention pond here but there's actually a culvert that runs across the road underneath the road and you're going to wash this guy's property out because all of this is going to run down to that little culvert down there. Uh, besides the drainage problems, there's a, uh, I'd like to know where the utilities are coming from. <laughs> they promised us when they built Northern Hills Drive that they were going to have utilities, increase the utilities and everything, but the same old, uh, water line that runs down the road was used, utilized, and all they did is increase the pressure on that pipe. Uh, caused us to get a, a regulator there, but if they do it again to supply 17 more homes, I don't know, is the pipe, are the pipes over that many years going to uh, handle the pressure? Um, 
uh, electricity I can see. If they're all electric homes, I guess uh, there's not a problem with gas or um, propane. We're, uh, we're propane. We're out in an area that there are no gas lines. So uh, I know that Northern Hills was close to 72nd Street. So they could get a gas line on 72nd, but I don't know if these people are going to be required to tie onto that gas line up there or if they're going to have to be on propane. Uh, and then phone, in the phone in the area, we were told that we had phone lines and they wanted to take, they want, we have three phone lines and they wanted to take one from us. Um, they said they don't have enough phones in the area. I'm not sure where the phones are going to build a new line in for this one <laughs> or uh, what they're going to do. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is I think I heard a man from, well, I didn't get your name, but said that they were going to pay for this pavement of the streets, but I don't know who's going to maintain it after that, if that's going to be the county, which I believe it will be. Um, what happens when this road, I'm, I'm sure it's going to crumble. This, this street here, uh, this will come downhill to this road, and then uh, you'll get water from the beginning up here where the asphalt street starts and all the way to this T intersection. And I believe it's going to wash over the street at that point. The ditches in, the, in ours, in front of our house, are not very deep. They're probably two feet uh, V. And I, I know that they've had problems in that area before. I, I know that trucks have been in there and tried to figure out how to get the water out of this because the water will collect down in this area. So basically, those are my concerns. Okay. Thank you. Oh, can I go ahead. can I speak? Yeah, go ahead. Um, also, uh, for our area, uh, and when they did the Northern Hills Estates, they promised that uh, the the land and the houses would be commensurate with the area, and they came up with a dollar amount. I think between four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars for the house, and then there would be at least two to two and a half acres for each house there. Um, that was never uh, followed. Uh, most of the houses are just a little over an acre to two acres at the Northern Hills Estates. I noticed that all these are one acre lots. I don't know what kind of houses they're going to build there. Um, they said there's an area to the east. Uh, on 72nd Street that was, uh, I believe it was donated to the Irvington Fire Department and they built a street in there and they wanted uh, the firefighters to live on that street and they just wanted little tiny houses on that street and I just, I just don't want to see our area depleted anymore with the uh, cost of these houses being um, so much lower than ours. Our, uh, so we, we'd like to Pardon? Put that stipulation in? What's or that? Who wrote that stipulation in that you talked about, the size of the properties and the Well, they had, he, he had a meeting. Uh, Keith Edquist is partnered in Northern Hills Estates with another guy, Kenny Sauls, who owned that whole 100-acre property. He owned this land right here? No, no not this. This, this was here before. Um, uh, Skidmore, who owned all of this and have sold this piece off to them, had a plan to do this before Edquist came and, and got his plan approved. But they had a meeting at the airport, because Keith owns that too, and brought everybody in from the area and said that, yes, we'll, we will do these things, we'll make sure the things are commensurate, we'll make sure that it's two and a half acres, and the house... I will say the houses are very nice. They are commensurate and I have no problem with them. But I, I don't know what that's really going to do when you start um, decreasing the size of the properties. I mean, it's the tax, uh, evidently the taxes are going to go down in our place and everybody else is around here, which are, we're probably the smallest place in the area. I mean, everybody 
around us. These people are multiple acres. Uh, I think it's 35, the people um, to the east. Um, Larry, there's quite a few in there. And, uh, and then everybody that's uh, north of this property, all those are at least 10 acre plots going that way. Because at that time when they were built, uh, the county required that you had well, I think it was 10 acres, first of all, so you could have a septic system. And then uh, they cut it to five acres. And now I, I, I think these people are all going to be on septic system. There's nothing about them tying into any sewers or any sewer system. Um, there's a note about a storm sewer system, but I don't see any on the drawings. Um, so uh, thank you, John. I think we got it. Thank you. Thanks. Any other opponents that wish to speak? I'm Janet Reinig, and I live at 13225 North 66th Street. And that is just up past the camp's driveway, which is just past this map here. Um, and I just, at one point in here, the water goes this way, and the other point it goes this way, and the gravel drains all down there and drains into our driveway many times into our, um, the grass in the, uh, you know, next to the road, and I'm digging gravel out of there different times. And I think with having this paved or um, surface, it will just increase that tenfold. I'm concerned. And the county road only goes maybe half again as far, and then it ends and goes to private road. So I don't know if, I'd, I just would like to know what the plans are to address that issue, because it will probably get worse. Got so um, the other thing I was curious about was where would mailboxes be located? Are they going to be out here on the main road, or are they going to be in front of each of the, the homes? And um, I think that's the main thing. Just you know, again, the, I, the county is going to come out here and have gravel, a little portion over here, and surface over here. So that's just kind of a, how is that going to work, or how are they going to maintain it? So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, John. Any other opponents? Hi there, my name is Sarah Roop. I'm John's wife, live at 6610 Northern Hills Drive. If this was already covered, you have to forgive me, I didn't hear it. Um, a lot of times when they come in and pave roads, half of that road is expected to be paved for each side. However, this road is of no benefit to us as a whole, and I am hoping to not have to pay for something that is a boon to the developer that we have to pay for. It doesn't seem right, so I wanted to know how that's going to be covered, if they're going to pay for what's going to profit them or whether we're going to out be stuck with some of that bill. Okay, thank okay. you. Any other opponents? There was one thing I forgot to mention. Richard Scott Camp, 13326 North 66. The thing I was wondering about is, is there going to be any way that they keep, when they start paving this, are they going to keep our access open 24-7, like by doing the west half first and the east half second? Because we, <clears throat> we have to keep working and living here, so I just want to make sure they're going to provide a way for us to get in and out of this neighborhood, because that's the only way out is to the south. Okay, thank you, Richard. Thank you. All right, I'm going to close the public hearing. Mark, if you want to come up, I think I got a long stormwater list. drainage maybe is something that you have control over. Um, if you want to address any other issues. I, uh, I'll try and address most of them very quickly. Okay. Sorry, I know you've been here for a long time. Um, so the drainage situation is, and we've had this situation in the other acreage developments we've done out here, but we've had rural section roads on the, and this one is proposed to be uh, an urban section road, so it has curb and gutter. So what happens, this, this is the hill right here, and the water goes this way, and it goes this way from this hill. And this street is going to intercept a, quite a bit of that water and take it down into the detention basins. 
I'm not saying there isn't going to be any that has historically gone to the northeast corner, but it is going to be greatly reduced. So, and we had actually proposed on this short piece of street here to have a rural section street. Uh, staff disagreed with that and uh, wants that to be Kerman Gutter also. So we have some more work to do in that northeast corner to uh, create some sort of uh, detention or post-construction stormwater management feature that will uh, take care of the problems that that uh, Richard was talking about in that northeast corner. So a little work to be done there, but I think we can find something that's uh, satisfactory and will actually make the, the drainage actually going to be reduced. The drainage area that's going to that to that area to the northeast corner is less now than it was historically. So hopefully that helps. Uh, Another item that was mentioned on 66th Street, we did propose to end it at our access. Uh, staff again said, you need to go to the property line, so it will go all the way to the north property line. Um, buildable areas, oh, the buildable areas have simply are shown as the setback areas of the side and the rear lots. I, I don't have a problem. We, we've shown an extremely large building envelope there. Um, don't have a problem reducing that sum. The, the building envelopes are very, very large uh, so that the individual lot buyer has the flexibility to do what they want to with the, the siting of the home. Um, There's some discussion about traffic and uh, maybe Ryan wants to comment, maybe he doesn't, but uh, Northern Hills Drive is a, is a collector road even though it's, it's fairly narrow. Um, these 17 lots will produce traffic, there's no doubt about that, but um, Northern Hills Drive, although it does have some traffic on it, is nowhere near uh, capacity for a, a collector or even a local street. So um, I understand the concerns about um, the site distances, but uh, as Mr. Root was talking about, 66th Street used to be right here, and the county actually moved it over to attain better site distance at this location. So while it's not perfect, um, I, I think the county um, tried to get it as good as they could with what they, with the uh, grades that they had on Northern Hills Drive. And again, we don't have any direct access on the Northern Hills. We just come onto 66th Street and, and use what the, what the county has already uh, approved. Uh, talked about the water a little bit. It is the rural water system that is uh, run by the Papua Missouri River uh, Natural Resource District. Uh, Homes will probably be on propane if gas, MED gas is not available out there at the current time. Um, if it becomes available, I'm sure we'll make use of it, but, but our plans are not to extend it uh, over to this site. Um, and then phone lines really don't have a whole lot to do with the uh, applicability of the, uh, of the development. Um, so we'll, we'll take what we can get and what's available out there. As far as the value of the houses, um, you know, I, I don't think the, the size of the lot has much to do with the value of the house. Um, uh, one acre lots are what is allowed in the DR zoning. That's the smallest lot that we can have and still have a septic system. Um, but these houses will be similar to what's in Northern Hills Estate and the single house that's uh, lo currently located in, in Smoky Ridge. So they're, they're, um, we're not going to stand up here and, and talk about the, the values that will be here, but they will be these lots will be in the neighborhood of seventy to eighty-five thousand dollars, probably in price, and, and oftentimes the price of the land is about twenty percent of the price of the house, and you can do the math. So um, they they will be very very nice houses. Uh, they're located on a on a slightly smaller lot, being one acre, but one acre is a pretty good sized lot, one hundred and fifty foot frontage compared to what you see in, in some areas. Mailboxes will probably get, be gang mailboxes. That the, that's what the post office is dictating these days. Uh, maintenance of the road will be done by the county, um, but the payment of the road is 100% on the developer. So that uh, they had some concerns about whether that was going to be assessed to other property owners. It is not. And then the access during paving question. Um, yes, we will provide access during paving, whether that's a temporary road or or some other means, doing it in phases, but that will be provided. So hopefully I've addressed most of those questions. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions or comments? Eric? 
did you want to bring? Do we need to bring Ryan up for anything? Ryan Haas with the Public Works Department. Uh, just to follow up on a couple things briefly, um, this is well below the, the threshold where we require a traffic study. Um, traffic studies are required generally on projects which generate 100 or more peak hour trips. Um, based on the, the national guidelines here um, on a 17 lot single family subdivision, it'd be about 17 peak hour trips in the PM peak. That'd be the worst case scenario on a given day. Uh, and even then, that splits some inbound, some outbound. So um, the county engineer's office receives and comments on any proposed plat in their jurisdiction. Uh, they received this one and, and provided comments, and, and they didn't provide any feedback relating to the site distance on Northern Hills. Um, they had the same comment that we did where uh, there wouldn't be any permitted access directly from lots one and three, the ones that abut Northern Hills. They would have to take access to the internal street um, and then use the 66th Street connection to Northern Hills. Um, and then the, the maintenance is something that we're, we'll have to coordinate a little further with the county on. Um, I, I believe the internal streets are going to be required to be maintained privately by a, uh, an association. or um, And then 66th Street is the one that's maybe up in the air a little bit. I, I don't know if the county would be willing to maintain that one after it's improved or if that would also be the obligation of the association. But that's something that uh, we can continue to coordinate with the county on. Eric, do you want to uh, take agenda item number nine first? Yeah. <clears throat> so this preliminary plat, there are three proposed um, subdivision section waivers, uh, waiver of lot frontage, which is for the storm um, stormwater detention area on the northwest portion of the site. Uh, staff is acceptable to that. Um, another is a waiver of sidewalks. Um, based on the location in the North Hills overlay and the environmental concerns and, and the grades that are um, in that area, we are acceptable to the waiver of sidewalks. The third one is a waiver for um, street surfacing, which is a little deceptive that um, there's several different elements within the that section. So Mark had touched on it briefly. There is a small um, portion adjacent to lot 17 that is a rural section that we are um, wanting to be curbing gutter with the remainder of, or the, the rest of that cul-de-sac street. It's not our intention to have any negative impact on the drainage um, figures. So, you know, we definitely are going to encourage the applicant continue to work with us in public works. Um, you know, if, if they prove to us that there are you know, mitigating drainage impacts to sur surrounding properties, we would definitely be acceptable to, um, you know, the best solution to, you know, to, to reduce any potential drainage or runoff. So we're going to recommend denial of that waiver, but we can continue to have those coordinations if it's determined that uh, the best solution is to have that small section as a rural section. Perhaps we can revisit that. You could always, uh, with the final plat, we could have a potential subdivision waiver. Uh, but I'm going to keep the staff recommendation report as it is right now, but it would definitely um, encourage further discussion on that element. Um, yeah, Mark touched on uh, the mailbox. Typically, they do cluster boxes, but we defer to the post office. I would encourage the applicant to continue to meet with neighbors uh, to make sure to answer all their questions. Um, there is one item that was mistakenly left out of our subdivision or uh, the subdivision report. So when I get to the recommendation, I am going to add an 11th condition and I'm going to read it and you could probably just say, you know, subject, if, if you're amenable, subject to adding the condition as proposed by staff. But it does have to do with the septic systems. Um, so I'm going to add 11th condition of recommendation to provide a letter of approval from the NDEQ regarding septic systems prior to or with submittal of a final plat. Um, that is customary whenever there is a septic system that is less than three acres in size. Um, Unfortunately, we just mistakenly left that out. So I apologize, but that is an important component that, that we are recommending to be added. 
Um, so unless you have further questions, I'm going to recommend approval of the waiver to Section 5384D for lot frontage for Outlot A, denial of the waiver to Section 5393 street surfacing, approval of the waiver to Section 5399 sidewalks, approval of the preliminary plat subject to the 11 conditions with the 11th that I just recommended. Motion to approve the waiver of Section 5384D lot frontage for Outlot A. Denial of the waiver of Section 5393 for street servicing. Approval of the waiver of Section 5399 for sidewalks. And approval of preliminary plans subject to the 11 conditions in the staff report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you record the vote, please? Rosacker? Yes. Pate? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Maggot? Yes. Carnes? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Regarding to yep. 24. Okay. Regarding agenda item number 24, so this is a special use permit to allow the development in the North Hills Environmental Overlay District. Um, single family residential uses are permitted in the DR district and can be appropriate at very low densities in this overlay district if particular attention is taken to minimize grading that disrupts steep slopes and unstable slopes in the area. Um, so we had some discussion about that. I further encourage uh, the applicant, as I mentioned, to meet with the adjacent neighbors and there are stormwater requirements that they will have to follow with the development. Staff recommends approval of the special use permit subject to the two conditions in the recommendation report. I move for approval of the special use permit to allow development in the Eating Northern Hills Environmental Resource District subject to the following, or the, I'm sorry, the two conditions in the department's recommendation report um, being met prior to forwarding to City Council for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you record the vote, please? Pate? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Magan? Yes. Carnes? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Um, I believe we're on agenda item number 28. And I'm recusing myself. Okay, let the record show that Chris Carnes is recusing herself and has left the chamber. It's agenda item number 28, case C7 89 37. Applicant Westside Community Schools Foundation request. Approval of a major amendment to the conditional use permit to allow secondary educational facilities in the R2 district. Location 8601 Arbor Street. May we hear from the applicant. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Michael Coyle, uh, 409 South 17th Street, appearing on behalf of the Westside Community Schools Foundation. Uh, with me here today is Ms. Laura Eiliff, who's uh, president of the Westside uh, Community Schools Foundation. Uh, we're here today uh, on a uh, application for conditional use permit for a sign uh, for the West Side Middle School. And I think it's set forth in the application that uh, we had a benefactor donate an electronic sign to us and we'd like to put it up at the uh, middle school. If I could direct your attention to the screen here, uh, this, is a, this is a 19 acre tract and its arbor is on the north side and Center Street is down here at the bottom where we propose to put the sign is basically in the middle of the property. And a couple of things to show you, which I think is significant is, is, is that this is actually the traffic flow pattern uh, for the middle school. And as you can see, where we propose to put the sign is here next to the school because cars come up from Center Street for parents to drop off kids and even if they come in from Arbor Street on the north, they'll still come around and pull up directly in front of the school. Here's a picture uh, of where the sign will sit, which is, which is right here um, in front of the middle school. Now, uh, why are we asking you to do this is, is that, uh, first of all, uh, there's 10 uh, elementary schools, and there's only one middle school at West Hyde. And we built the Performing Arts Center at the middle school uh, a number of years ago. So we have a lot of the parents from the grade schools who are coming up to take kids up there for band concerts. They also have uh, basketball tournaments and, and whatnot. And so we want to put the sign here, which is in the, in the middle uh, of the property of the 19 acre track. I think what's significant about that is for a couple reasons is one, there's not going to be any signage uh, on Center Street. There's not going to be anything flashing. 
there's not going to be any signage here on Arbor Street to the north, uh, so there won't be anything for any of the residents. The sign is just going to be here to provide information for parents who are dropping their children off for either a band concert or, or something up at the middle school. I think it's significant is because it's the only middle school that the Westside Community Schools has. We started off with the Zoning Board of Appeals and then uh, just about a week before the hearing we learned that we needed to come here for a conditional use permit. Uh, when I spoke to a planning uh, board staff, they said that, you know, we're going to, they told us when we filed our application that they would likely recommend denial because they don't do it for middle schools as a matter of course. Uh, I don't know if we'll have any opponents here. We spoke to everybody who called us. I don't think we will. Uh, but I think what's key about this is, is, is that um, there's not going to be any uh, flashing sign for any parent or for any home that lives nearby. It's just going to be really informational uh, for the parents. So uh, we'd ask for, uh, notwithstanding the uh, recommendations of my colleagues at the planning board, I'd ask that you uh, consider granting our uh, a waiver for their conditional use. Mike, do you have a quick question? Yes. A question for you. Uh, how many students in that middle school? Do we know? Uh, it's large. I'm going to say 900. Yeah. So 10 elementaries? 10 elementary schools. This is our only middle school, we do, and, and Westside only has one high school. Yeah. So that, and again, uh, that's, that's the reason that, that we're asking for it. And so I think the traditional reasons that, that, that make the folks in planning uncomfortable really don't exist here. So. Yeah. Will the sign be operated, maybe you already said this, I'm sorry, but will the sign be operated 24 hours a day, or will you shut it off at certain times and turn it back on at certain times, or how, how do you plan to operate it? You know, I, I think that that's, I think that we'd be willing to, to do it, it it's anything that's the most uh, uh, that the neighbors would. I, I, I don't anticipate any neighbor is going to be able to even see this. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'd certainly be uh, willing to listen to any uh, limits on, on the sign and for informational purposes. Mr. England, will you? We, had a, we talked at length in our pre-meeting on this. Can you describe to him the things that you told me that if we go against your fine recommendation, um, I want to see if he's okay with those issues and make sure he understands. There's some Zoning Board of Appeals issues and there's some performance standards that if, if one of us um, makes a motion to, to approve this, I want to see if it's okay with you to add that in, if you'd agree to it. Yeah, so the, well, I mean, we can get to it after the public hearing, but um, because you're asking the section that we referenced is specifically regarding electronic off-premise signage. However, it has certain restrictions or limitations on um, signage, digital signage, electronic signage, dealing with brightness, image restriction, transition time, noise restriction, size and height. Okay. So I can, um, you know, I can have the applicant look at that code section. So the size and height, obviously, we're not going to, you already have the sign. Yeah, and I think we have to, and, and, in, and in fairness, I think that we still have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals to, to get a, a couple of waivers for that as well. Okay. But it's... So the starting rest. That's okay. I'll just elaborate more when we get past the public hearing. Okay. About. okay. Any other proponents that wish to talk? To speak, I should say. Okay, seeing none, are there any opponents that wish to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Any additional comments, questions from the board? I just, I feel strongly about this, and not to put you guys in the hot seat, but this is my last request of you as an outgoing <laughs> board member, as the class president of 1987 of class of Westside High School. I did not go to the middle school because it didn't exist back then. Um, but I, this is in the middle of campus. It's, there's, there's one junior high. This is a message board for plays and concerts and things like that. It's not, it, it, there's no harm done here. I understand why the, why the city uh, ha, you know, has their policies. And I've always talked about the reason why we exist is for the exceptions, not for the rules, but for the exceptions. And, and I, I would ask everybody to, to vote in favor of this, and, and when we're done discussing, I'll, I'll ask to make the motion to approve it. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, any other comments or questions? Eric? Okay. Yeah, so typically staff does not support electronic messaging for primary, middle schools, and uh, churches and residential districts. We do usually support them for high schools based on the size of those campuses, um, potentially having multiple street frontages, um, the number of events that are, is occurring ba you know, based on the large number of students. So that's how we've differentiated. Um, we obviously do have a recommendation for denial for the sake of consistency. I, I do, yeah, we do recognize this is not right up on Arbor Street or right next to a neighboring residential property or right along Center Street. Uh, so that's good. Um, but for the sake of consistency, we are recommending denial. Um, that being said, yes, if, uh, if the planning board was inclined to approve this, um, it would also proceed to the Zoning Board of Appeals, but because it's a major amendment to the use permit, it needs your permission basically to go to the ZBA. Uh, there are two waivers basically uh, to allow the electronic messaging and then also to the overall sign budget from 32 square feet to 95 square feet. So as we discussed in the pre-meeting, if you feel inclined to approve this, I would ask that you add two conditions subject to receiving the applicable ZBA waivers would be number one, and then number two, that the sign be subject to section 55-854A through E. And I can go through any of those specific requirements. I don't know if the applicant would like to see a copy of that code. I don't know if you, if you have questions. Or, or any of those have to do with, with, with size? Yeah, specifically letter E, size and height. So remember this is technically for electronic off-premise signs, mm -hmm. but it's the same idea. The size and height, uh, uh, the size and height requirements of the electronic off-premise sign must comply with the current regulations as indicated in each applicable zoning district. I don't think there's, I don't think there's anything in these sections that um, would cause any concerns. You know, that I will touch on, you know, while we're, I guess, going into them at length, um, you know, image restriction, there's a part that says each image shown must be static and not contain any type of motion, animation, scrolling of text, or sequential displays designed to appear as such. We're trying to prevent flashing images, things like that, that can be um, distracting usually to vehicular traffic. Um, transition time, there's a section about, um, I don't see it, I think there's a, a duration of 10 seconds. I lost it though, so. Go ahead. I'll defer to my colleague and friend, Mike Pate, who may represent another school district, but yet, He's going to put aside his competitive differences for the for the good of all students and. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Mr. Chair, just a, one one thing to keep in mind. Uh, this is a kind of a special request, but Trenton's not going to be here next month. And if we have another uh, request of this, this board's going to have to back up whatever vote we take. I, I understand it's a special situation, but just keep that in mind. Not saying how to vote, just keep that in mind. You yeah, know, I appreciate that very much, and, and Mr. Chair, and, 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 you know, very rarely do we make exceptions to rules, but as I mentioned before, sometimes you've got to, common sense comes into play a little bit, and since this is kind of right in the middle of, of campus and not really disturbing the neighborhood in any way, shape, or form, or traffic at all, I, I, I we've, I think we've made exceptions before to this on this board, and so with that, I will make a motion to approve um, the major amendment to the commission, uh, condition use permit subject to uh, receiving the application for the ZBA waivers and uh, compliance with section 55854, the performance standards sections A through E. Second. Second. Well, geez. <laughs> My last we have a motion and a Trenton can you second. Can you, can you Lisa? I, I yield to you. Okay, second. <laughs> Lisa, will you please record the vote? Uh, Rosecker? Yes. Pate? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Magid? Yes. Mr. Chair? No. Okay, motion approved. 
Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let the record show that Chris Carnes has rejoined the meeting. Uh, I think we're on our last agenda item, number 32. It was on uh, consent for layover. It was pulled off. It's case C7-19-156, applicant Fairway Stores, Inc., request approval, pr approval of a conditional use permit to allow food sales general in the LC district. Location, Northeast 132nd and 4th Streets. Good Are afternoon. The applicant? Good afternoon. My name is Mark Klinker. I am representing the owner of the property at this point. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to the board. Um, Mr. Maggot, congratulations. Thank you for your service. Thank for all of you for your service. Um, I, uh, I enjoy your program on Saturday mornings. And, nice and Sam. Yeah. Nice yeah. <laughs> And uh, we shared a lunch once at the CRE uh, deal once. So, anyway, I know that uh, I know I'm kind of swimming upstream uh, here, but winter is coming, and I I would just as soon see if at least I'm going to stand here. I'm going to ask. I'm going to be able to tell my client who is me that I asked. Um, the uh, the request is uh, the, the the report that we got from from staff. Um, recommends uh, uh, the layover uh, in order to give the applicant um, who is fairway stores um, the opportunity to uh, add additional things which uh, are all there laid out in uh, in the analysis that that you receive on this project um, my my uh, pitch I guess is that you know this is a, this is a question between a uh, a zoning that allows limited grocery stores and a zoning that allows um, you know, gro or food sales general, and the the next highest uh, highest uh, uh, use would allow this. This would be permitted as right, as a right. And it would seem to me, and I could be wrong about this procedure, but if this was permitted by right, all of the items laid out in this analysis would be handled by city staff um, as we go along. The uh, to lay this over for another month, you know, brings us another another entire month closer to uh, winter and we're concerned about being able to grade this this fall um, <clears throat> so we'd like to get on with it so I guess the, the question or the, the, the request I have for this board is to uh, approve the conditional use permit subject to um, compliance with the items that are all found in the analysis on on page five of um, the, the staff's report I, I, I totally understand your concern about winter coming and, and you know, the shortening of the, of the building season and thing, but how long have you been contemplating doing this? Uh, you know, we're in September now, so is there a reason why you haven't started this process sooner? Well, the, the truth is is that um, in order to move forward with this, this development at all, we had to solve the traffic access issues, and Ryan has been involved in that. Mr. Uh, uh, Fanslaw has been entitled in, in involved in that we actually started discussions about this project not necessarily with fairway but discussions toward the development of this piece of property which is a remnant um, with respect to what can really be built on something that's strictly right in right out off of 4th Street and right in right out uh, off of 132nd Street and working through those problems in order to get fairway comfortable that they could actually build a store there and make a go of it uh, that is really what uh, what has kind of delayed, you know, this project because until they were satisfied with where uh, with where the access points were going to be, and the understanding that you know that, that those develop that development of 132nd Street, development of Fourth Street are going to be off into the future for a while, they're, they they became comfortable with being able to move ahead with this project. So that's really why we're not here, probably two months ago. But you've been in dialogue with the, with, the, with the different players for quite some time. Yes. Yeah. I mean, different players being people. Fairway, city. Yes. Yes. You. Yes. Is there additional land to be developed to the north of these two buildings? Yes, there is. There's about three acres, and that is committed, and, and that we're, we'll, we'll be back early next year asking for that to be rezoned R7. Okay. And the, it, it's planned for 55-plus uh, senior housing. I know one of our concerns that this, the planning staff had was the diagonal parking, the 
percent diagonal or whatever that we don't allow. Is that correct? That's one of the items. Yeah. That's one of the items. Do you know if the are you the you're the seller of the land? Is that what yes? You're, okay. But so I don't. I guess the. I guess they, they're not here to answer whether they can straighten the parking out, but there's a, sounds like there's, the question is, is there enough issues that we have to lay this over, or is there any way that we can say, if you do this, this, and this, then we can vote on it? The staff's recommendation is that there are several little items that add up to a recommendation for layover. Um, I guess one item to note is that approval of this conditional use permit if it were approved today and we are not recommending approval of that because you know we wrote our report up for a layover and there are you know you can't just flip those items for layover and turn it into a, a condition of approval I'd be scared there would be items that are missed but there is still a plat component that is proceeding through the Planning Board and City Council so currently this site is a portion of a platted lot the proposed lot that the fairway grocery store would go on has not been finalized or recorded so there's not going to be a building permit that would be approved until that's done now you know I believe that they could work with public works on grading permits that would be allowed now at this time so I don't see the harm in laying it over it could come back next next month we give additional time to get to get revised plans into us so I believe the deadline for the October Planning Board meeting is Monday we usually give you know until the end of that week for layover cases to get revised uh, plans into us um, to, to me you know I'm not comfortable rushing it we think it should be laid over you know due to um, there's not enough parking stalls that are provided it has the wrong parking angle there's some additional transparency as a result of the MCC requirements there's some other landscaping items internal uh, pedestrian sidewalks things like that so you think you get enough information to them by the end of next week oh I believe so um, Kyle uh, Graham is here from Olson Kyle Graham with Olson uh, 2111 South 67th Street um, I I know I guess we've been working with both Ryan and uh, Robert LaRocco um, to get an acceptable plan put together for this site. Um, I wasn't aware of, of some of these specific items that you've mentioned in the report, but uh, we can certainly work on all of those. We, we would be willing to do so if the recommendation were to approve it with those conditions, um, but if, if it does get laid over, we'll make sure to get it all updated within the next week or so. And just to be clear, what you said before, they can apply for a grading permit and get that going without having any of this approved. We're, we're currently in the process of getting okay. our grading permits. So. Yeah, so that's that's not holding you up. That's a big step. Yeah. Okay. Any other proponents that wish to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Are you an opponent? Yes. Okay. Come forward. Give your name and address, please. Good uh, evening, afternoon, whatever it is. Uh, my name is Corby Crick. I live at 13014 Ogden Circle. Uh, I stand on my deck and I can see Mr. Klinker's uh, property. Um, I've been living there since 2010. Uh, the property has never been occupied. Uh, during my uh, stint as a resident here, um, I, I worry a little bit uh, because my house, while I am on a hill uh, in Western, uh, in, on the hilltop there, uh, his property is higher than mine. I'd be standing out on my deck grilling burgers while my kid plays in the yard looking at the trash can of a grocery store. This is not something that I think is desirable for me or any of my neighbors that live on Ogden Circle as well uh, that butts right up against that property. Um, several of my neighbors who I believe were here but had to leave uh, due to the uh, long-running uh, meeting here um, are going to have to move fence lines in several feet that were put in there. So they're going to have to move fence lines in. Um, I don't think that this corner 
needs a grocery store. We've got a Baker's down the street. We've got Target right across from Baker's. We've got a Walmart neighborhood market right across from Target. Do we need another grocery store? I don't think we do. Um, I, I'm sorry to hear that this deal already happened, but uh, I would like to know um, if Fairway is in, that, in fact going to build there, uh, what sort of conditions are going to be put in place? Um, are they going to be running high power uh, parking lot lights all the time? Um, what's the traffic pattern going to be like? I have seen you know, kind of an in initial diagram of how the parking lot would be laid out. I'd like to see more renderings of what the store would look like and um, what's my view going to be while I'm out on my deck? Am I looking at the back of a store or is there going to be some sort of fence constructed there? Uh, what are the hours going to be? Are these lights going to be on during the nighttime all the time? Is it going to be less than that? Um, those are the issues that I want to bring up today. Yeah. You, when you bought that property, obviously that was a vacant lot at yeah. that time too. So it's you, been you vacant had to this figure whole that time. it was going to be developed commercially at sure. some point, right? Like every major corner is. Yeah. So whether it's a grocery store or an office complex or a Walmart, um, I mean something was going to go there. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, the, the initial plans that I saw was uh, something like a assisted living facility or something like that, not not necessarily a grocery store. Um, more people living there, I don't think we'd have a problem with that. Um, but it's it's commercial traffic that's going to be there. Um, that's also that's a very busy intersection now as it is. Um, putting a grocery store in there is only, only going to increase that. Um, and we have the same problems that the previous people did with the hill. Um, between 132nd and 120th Street is a fairly street, steep hill. Uh, there is only one access in and out of the neighborhood there, right right there where I'm at um, on the hill. So, so you get off of uh, Port Street then? Uh, yeah, I'm off, off on Port Street, 129th Street, yep. I mean, if they want to give me free meat, uh, I, I, everybody's got a price, right? Okay. So now we know the real issue. <laughs> Thank you. It seems like there's a, there's a pretty good buffer there. I mean, there's an entire parcel of land there that's undeveloped, and he had mentioned that, didn't you mention that there's going to be active senior living there? Active senior living there. Yeah, senior yeah. living. There'll be three acres to the north side of the development for yeah. senior living, yes. That's the north side. Okay. Are there any other opponents that wish to speak? Seeing now to close the public hearing. Mark, did you want to? I just, I just that? wanted to say one thing that uh, it, it has not. It was, it was occupied by my mother until uh, 2012. So, and what? Excuse me. Well, that. Yes. Oh, and the house was torn down last summer. So. Um, did you have all the land in the neighborhood too? Yes. Well. I, I don't tell everybody this, but I've been practicing law for 46 years. And there's been some file on my desk for this property, not didn't necessarily <laughs> this property, but the whole quarter section and the section across the street. There's never been a time that there hasn't been a file on my desk about this property. And this is this is the end of it. I understand. I okay. So anyway, I, I understand your position. Um, I understand why you would, would lay it over. I you know, I need to I wanted to make my pitch. Thank you. I've spent a very instructive afternoon. <laughs> Any Even additional? Even a lawyer can learn new tricks. Any additional comments, questions from the board? No, I think everybody's got good points. And uh, go ahead, okay. Eric. Yeah. So I had mentioned some of the items that we're looking at um, getting more refined and dialed in on. Um, I definitely think that we're close, and that we can get to an area of recommending approval. I do want to point out that the property has been zoned. Um, commercially since the mid 1970s um, you know our predecessors didn't do the best job of uh, allowing some interconnectedness to the adjacent neighborhood so unfortunately we can't get a connection to the neighborhood but um, it is what it is so we are recommending layover as I said we can continue to work with the applicant and get it back on next month if they're able to get us revised plans and uh, we're definitely willing to um, to, to meet with them if, if we need to or to just continue to coordinate. So staff is recommending layover the conditional use permit. Okay. Do we have a motion? Sales in general in the LC district. 
Second. I have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you record the vote? Pete? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Magan? Yes. Rosacker? No. Carnes? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. I think that was the last item. Do we have a motion for the minutes from last month? Move to, move to approve. Uh, Pre-meeting, I'm sorry. Yeah. Move to approve the pre-meeting minutes from the August 7th, 2019 second. meeting. We have a motion to second. Lisa, will you record the vote? Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Magid? Yes. Carnes? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Pate? Yes. Mr. Chair? Abstain. Move to approve the minutes from the uh, planning board meeting August 7th, 2019. Second. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you record the vote? Morris? Yes. Magid? Yes. Carnes? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Pate? Yes. Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Do we have a motion? motion Trenton, do you want to make the motion to adjourn? Second. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you record the vote? <laughs> Magid? Yes. Morris? The second, guys. Yes. Moore? Yes. Pate? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Carnes? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved, adjourn at 4.30.